Hi, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Whether you're watching a video or listening to a podcast version, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. Links to videos or MP3 files can be found at MiamiGhostChronicles.com. You can also find information about my talk show appearances and any new book projects at MarlenePardo.com or go to Amazon and look at my author profile as Marlene Pardo Pelliser. I narrate several podcast series that can be found on major podcast platforms and also listen to via Alexa, Sonos, and other home systems. Look for Supernatural Storytime for Scary Storytelling, Nightshade Diary for Classic Horror and Adventure Stories, and of course, Stories of the Supernatural for interviews with different guests as we talk about the mysteries of the unexplained. If you want to get noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy theories, and just about anything that is plain weird, you can visit Strange Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. This is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural. And... I'm laughing because I was just talking to our guests and we were having a really, really interesting conversation. <laughs> but anyway, uh, everybody asks me, you know, we're st- we're still, you know, in South Florida. Oh, you know, we're we're still having to wear masks. They've eased up on a lot of stuff, but we're we're still wearing masks for you know if we go out. And I was telling you know, it, it's down here. It, it's June hot and humid let me tell you something it's it's a hard thing to do it is you um it's it talk about hypoxia like like you think you're uh it, it becomes very difficult um to to feel that i mean i feel sometimes like my eyelids are sweating because it's like oh my god but you know like just just won't be me i'm just like i'm venting <laughs> it's like so so anyway let's get on to the good stuff otherwise you know the world keeps turning uh i know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on out there and i'm not gonna get into it because sometimes i think that people that come and listen to my show or shows like mine it's to get away from all the stuff the crazy stuff that's going out there like let's distract let's listen to other stuff Let's hear interviews with interesting people about the paranormal or the ghost or whatever, because sometimes it's these distractions when things are very unsure, um, you know, or people are, with good reason, by the way, are maybe stressed out depending on what's going on in their lives. This is like a little respite. So I'm not even going to go into that. So, But let's go to the good stuff. Let me, let me tell you about the guest I have, and he's been here before. His name is Mark E. Fulton. He's a well-known psychic native to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now he lives in Pensacola, Florida. He's a Floridian now. Yay. And the author Yay. Of, yay. <laughs> he's the author of Chattanooga Chills. He's in partnership with Teal Gray Worldwide. And they've created the Great Faults Press. And they publish their own books. Uh, the titles included are Shades of Angels, Spirit Tales, uh, Mark's also done illustrations, including several stories in each of the uh, Great Teal's best-selling books, and he has four new books of his own forthcoming: uh, *Corpsewood*, *Catchfly*, *A Witch's Tale*, uh, available on Amazon. *The Psychic Warm Stitch*, *A Psychic Tell All* book, *The Darkest Corner*, uh, *Tales of Necrophilia*, and *Necromancy*, and of course *Chattanooga Chills Scream Louder*, and *Chattanooga Chills Tales from the Grave*. He also has several YouTube shows, uh, Shadows Paranormal and Secrets of the Reed House by Stormline Films. And he's working on a song to accompany his upcoming children's book, The Wind is Calling My Name. So help me to welcome him back. How are you doing, Mark? I am fat and sassy. And, yeah. uh, that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually calling myself the fat psychic uh, uh, because so I am funny. fat compared to... I was, uh, well, when I was young, I had more friends, so I, you're usually pretty skinny. Right, yes. And after I got into my middle age spread, you know, yeah. I'm fat. I'm over 200 pounds. Well, I used to be 118 pounds. Yes. At six foot two. So 
people go, you're not fat, you're not fat. And I go, yes, I am. I look like I ate my other self. Right. And um, so, but I do the fat psychic. So I start, I'm going to be doing the fat psychic cooking show where uh-huh. I'll tell, I'll cook something from my mean old grandma's cookbook. <laughs> and then at the end of it, while you're eating your biscuits, then I'll tell a ghost story. I think that's great. And... And it's going to be fun. And then uh, I just started doing videos under the Fat Psychic where I have two friends, Will Rosasco and Wilfredo Rivera, and we do the Fat Psychic Paranormal Group. And uh, we've been, if you go on YouTube and look up Mark Fultz, F-U-L-T-S, you'll see a big pink round thing. Uh, You click on that and it'll show all my movies. Okay. Uh, But I've done The Haunting of... Camelot Junction and all that and and like I said uh, I just started uh, I just finished uh, I do a lot of channeling because I do comedy and horror together because I think it's always a great I think it makes the awesome. horror more intense and the horror makes the comedy more yes. intense yes and uh, so I just filmed channeling of the Bell Witch because uh, uh, I visited the Bell, Ca- Bell Witch Cave and uh, years ago, but I'm doing a book with Till Gray and uh, Christy Langley called, about witches in the modern world, and it'll be a history of witchcraft, but it'll be from the perspective of, since I'm a psychic witch, uh, okay. my, my witch perspective, spiritualism and witchcraft, uh, Christy is a voodoo priestess, so it'll be she's going to come from that angle, mm-hmm. and then Teal Gray is a Christian mystic. So we'll bring mm-hmm. the history of all of us and all of our experiences from those things. And so I've been real busy. <laughs> well, that's great. We talked busy. about it when you're creative. It's it's sometimes like it, it, this is the best thing, you know. It's like you know you've got the idea, and you know how sometimes you have these great ideas. But then when you start to try to implement them, it's like, man, this is a lot of work. <laughs> what? It's a lot of work, but you know, it's um, uh, like you know, when I moved to Florida, which I love, every two or three days, you know, my partner and I go, we love Florida. Um, it's it's a great place here, uh, where I'm at. It's you know, everywhere you have, uh, if you join metaphysical groups or metaphysical communities. Uh, they're always very, they're like anything else. You you have great people and you have not so great people. But the metaphysical community has been really good here um, and very accepting, and I, I've really been able to kind of blossom. And and like I said, you know, we're doing films, we're doing investigations, and uh, and the books, you know, I've, I've been part of about 10 books with Till Gray and... Sin Schrader Hill and uh, myself, my own books. But uh, so it's been kind of crazy, but in a great way. Right. Uh, because where I was at in Tennessee, it was very repressive. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can't, it's really sort of illegal to be a, a psychic in Tennessee, you know, and uh, in some parts of it. And, uh, and then you come here and it's like, oh, yeah, you know, they come. The guy who runs the store is a real sweet guy, and he's a video priest, and people come in all day long getting spells and getting candles, and right. and uh, it's great. So, I mean, you know, but it's uh, but my fat sake cooking show, I think it's going to, I'm looking forward to that, because yes. I think that's going to be a that's, blast, because my that grandmother... That is such a opened. fabulous idea. That is so great. Okay, oh, yeah. and I would love and to see what recipes you're gonna do for Halloween time. Well, I'm gonna. My first one is gonna be graveyard. I'm taking my grandmother's for, uh, recipe. So there's one that I love. It's this chocolate pudding thing. Uh-huh. It's about seventy years old recipe, but it looks it, it's fabulous. But it looks like cockadoo. <laughs> and um, so I'm gonna call it graveyard dirt pudding. Okay, but. Uh, but I'm going to make my own twist with it where you can put in Kahlua or, you know, a cherry liqueur or something because yes. it's very dark chocolate, okay. but it, it, it's, uh, but it has a pudding in it. It's kind of like a lava cake kind of thing, but it's from like the forties or fifties. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, it's delicious, but it looks like dirt. So yeah, I'm just like... going to turn it up, you know, I mean, and I make things that my mother made. I always say ate uh, American goulash. Well, now I'm going to call it American goulash. Oh, and, great. you know, and I'm going to have characters in the thing because my grandmother, Fultz, uh, my father's mother, she was meaner than a snake. <laughs> and the best cook you've ever met, because it was old Southern cooking with lard and, you yeah. know, uh, everything was delicious. She was, she was a great cook, a terrible person, but a great cook. Yeah. So I want to have her ghost being in there and, you know, I'm going to have poltergeist and possessed dolls and irritating me that I have to make go away by cooking her cookies. And, <laughs> That's great. Because um, my grandmother had this oatmeal cookie recipe that uh, she would do with lard in it, you know, of course, which made it great. And, uh, but it has like coconut in it to make it chewy, pecan to make it crunchy. And, wow. and it's wonderful. When I make those, people scratch the door wanting more. <laughs> and uh, because they haven't tasted lard before. And lard's yeah. natural. I think you process it better than than yeah. Yeah, it's gotten a bad reputation, and it's not. It's not. When yeah. you look into it, it's not. Oh, oh. And if you've never had corn pone with, made with lard or corn sticks or chicken, you know, you just haven't lived. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to do that kind of stuff. And it's, and then have the ghost on there and be silly and, you know, just, uh, yeah. you know, I just think it's going to be uh, exciting and fun. When are and then planning, I've got when, a. When, when are you gonna kick that off? Uh, I'm tra- I'm trying to get it started in July. July and okay. um, and I have a tour. I did a tour in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So when I moved, I had to kind of knock that off. But I I made it where it's an online tour. So I'm going to be putting that on in July as well. I've been okay. trying to put it on. I've got it ready to put on. Now I've got to get it where it works. Right. Uh, where you can pay for it, but uh, okay. it'll be really the first online ghost tour wow. that I've ever seen. I think it may be the first one, and it's two and a half hours long. Because Chattanooga, I, I, I mean, and it was just a tour of thirteen blocks down Chattanooga, mm-hmm. and I had two and a half hours of stories. Right, and that's not all of the stories of Chattanooga. So now that I'm here in Pensacola. I already have, I haven't even started, and I already have 50 stories. Wow. So I'm going to do one of Pensacola online. Pensacola is um, a very old city. It's a very old city. Oh, oh, I love it. And where I live, I live on something called Old Spanish Trail, which mm-hmm. it used to be an Indian trail, yeah. then the Spanish, and then a 100 years ago, they turned it into a brick road. So yes. uh, you've got this really haunted road, you know, I mean, just. Uh, all this Spanish moss and uh, yeah. just old, 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 you know, you can't throw a rock without hitting a ghost. So, yeah, no, no, people don't realize uh, that Pensacola, like St. Ooh. Augustine, New Orleans, Biloxi, all those were either French or, you know, uh, the Spanish oh, or yeah. English occupied it, but it's been a, a city or a settlement for that long. It's a very, it's oh, a yeah. lot of history, a lot. So, it's great, and it's, I love it. I love spooky places. I love haunted houses. I love living in haunted houses. You know, the one here though, I had to throw the spirit out because it was trying to play touchy feely. Uh, it was a guy who had died. I didn't realize it's why, because you know, if you get a go a haunted house, the rent is cheaper. I always think and about then it. If, and then and then later you on, you real you think? Did you know it ahead of time, or was it something you figured out once you were living? Oh, there? I know. I can tell when I go in them if they're haunted or not. Okay. And okay. I like haunted because I like the character. But the house that we got, actually, I mean, we're paying a hundred dollars less than we were paying in Chattanooga. Mm-hmm. I live in a house that's it's got a waterfront view over a bay. Right. And it's an antique, it was haunted, it was perfect, and uh, so, and you know, if you have a problem with the ghost, you know, I, I think it's character, you know, this is an old house, uh, but there was a guy who had died that we didn't know about uh, in a house behind us, he had died and laid in the house for like six weeks, 
And so when we moved in, his spirit had moved over here. And, uh, you know, I mean, at night I'd be trying to go to bed and go to sleep, and there would be this guy standing by the bed making noises and twiddling his thumbs. And I was like, I don't mind oh you being God. in this house. I'm like, I don't mind. I know this, you are here. But I said, but don't bother me. Don't bother my cats. Don't bother me. If, you, if you're if you just here and this is your house, that's fine. But then it got to where it was, you know, I mean, you could feel someone touch you. And uh, it was like having a uh, a silk glove with shells in it or something. You know, it's real strange. And uh, But I kicked that out of here, and then we found out about the guy behind here. It, it just was, he was, had just come to wherever there were people. Okay. And so I got rid of that, and it's been fine ever since. But uh, but I've got to go investigate. I investigated. My friend ho- owns a um, what used to be an old funeral home, oh. and now it's a boutique. Well, now here's what's special. <laughs> Let me tell because you. Uh, in the 40s, when it was a funeral home, Martha Beck worked there, and she left. She worked there for a while. She prepared the women in the 40s. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like within walking distance of my house. She went to New York, met up with Raymond Fernandez, and they became the Lonely Heart serial killers. And they killed 20 women and a toddler. And she was executed at Sing Sing. They sent her back here to the funeral home, and then they buried her in a unmarked grave like at 6 in the morning. And uh, she haunts that place. I mean, it's, uh, I did a show. I've done several shows about that. Uh, if you look up the haunting of Camelot Junction by the Fat Psychic, you'll see it. But uh, you, you know, there's just in Florida, it's just old. It's some yeah. of the older cities, and you don't have to go very far. Down the street from that is a house I've got to investigate, where a guy got thrown across the attic. Uh, because the spirit didn't, he's gay, and the guy's spirit doesn't like gay people. And oh, he was doing like an investigation, and he got thrown? Yes. Wow. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be investigating these things, and to clear, that one I'm going to clear out of the house, okay. because uh, they have children that, mm-hmm. uh, they have, uh, each partner had a house, so they have a house they live in, but they have children. And so I'm going to go to this and investigate it, and then get rid of it. Uh, because that's something that sounds, I can, you know, that I specialize in. But, yeah, that, that sounds like a uh, but you can't get a, yeah, but you can't walk anywhere without a ghost chair. And oh. uh, so I just think it's fun. And it's fun, interesting, you know, but of course it's not fun for some of the ghosts because, I mean, you know, they're, they've are they gone through traumas and stuff like that. So I try to right. treat them decently and... Mm-hmm. If there's something that can be done to help them, fine. And some of them don't want to be helped. Right. And um, that uh, it's, it's going to be very interesting. So Florida has been a, a unique experience already, and I've only been here two years. So uh, so so starting in July and August, I think uh, I'll have a lot of projects going out that people yes. will have fun with. Yes, absolutely. And um, I want to say... Believe it or not, my preference is I like those old time ghost stories because maybe it's because I romanticize yeah. them a little bit more. But uh, yeah. yeah, there's something about these uh, people that go back, you know, depending, of course, on what they did. Some people are quite horrible. Others stick around, obviously, for different reasons. Uh, but yeah, and, and it's surprising. You'll have people that live in some places and their experiences are very, very light. And then another family will move in, and it's like hell breaks loose. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it depends upon the person and how open they are, and how open their protective system is. Yeah, yeah. If your aura is in good working condition, it's usually not too bad. You can usually, you know, until you can cleanse, you just have. But uh, but in these cases where uh, there's something else. You know, where it gets pissed off if you start trying to act, if you come in as a Catholic telling it it's a demon, and it's not yeah. a demon, then they get mad at you anyway right. and cause yeah. more trouble. You know, yeah. if it's not relating to the spirituality you're trying to use to get it out, sure, it's going to make it worse. 
uh, usually. And then what you have to do is treat everything as energy. And don't give it a spiritual connection. You just use it as energy, push it out, change the locks, change the barrier, because you can't destroy the energy. Right, right. And uh, if you push it out, it'll go do something else. It'll go back to the grave and eat on the corpse, or, you know, because they can eat the minerals out of the corpse, or they go somewhere else. Right. But, uh, or they can go on sometimes. But, uh, and the fad right now is for people, there's a fad of people going, I'm a demonologist. Oh. Okay. And <laughs> so, and then, so I've known of one scientist guy who was creating thought forms to act like they were demonic and then act like he was controlling that. Okay. Uh, and it, it backfires I and uh, because you can't control that. Right. And so there are people doing some really weird things right now, uh, bringing energy into life that shouldn't. Yeah, that, 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 something like the tulpa, but then, you know, you lose control of it and then... It got it a will oh. of its own, and good luck on what you know putting that genie back in the bottle. Oh yeah, there is no putting a genie back in the bottle. It's like this: if you have a out of control teenager, mm -hmm. you can't no more control that teenager than you yeah. can the man in the moon. And the thing with thought forms and fetches and things like mm -hmm. that—if you create it, yes, at some point it has enough consciousness, it's yes. going to do what it wants. Yes. Uh, you know, you're you're out of luck. Yes, people people have and a hard time understanding that, that that you can actually create something like you oh, said yeah. a thought form that's not like a human spirit, like a ghost thing. The origins are yeah. not that. People have a hard time yeah. with that concept oh, yeah. sometimes. Oh yeah. Well, you have a psi energy, and that is a our our spirit that are in our bodies uh, are created out of a plasma. And everything that you are and you think and all that, your electrical system, the electromagnetic plasma shell, a uh, copy of you that's in you, uh, that's where the spirit and all that stuff is kind of like contained in. And when the body dies and falls, falls to the side and quits vibrating, the plasma shell is your ghost. And it has everything in it. It has the electrical system, everything. And uh, and it goes wherever it does. Or if it learns how to find, if it doesn't want to go on to the natural process, it can stay around wherever it wants to as long as it learns to eat thermal heat or energy or mm -hmm. materials. Like like I said, you know, some some spirits stay in the body because they can eat minerals from the decaying core. Right. Uh, which sounds gross, but it's it's part of nature. Mm -hmm. And they have chloroplast. All of our cells have chloroplast in them. So you, like a plant, you can get, you know, when you're in your body, you don't need it as much. But as a spirit, you can get energy and food from light, thermal heat, energy. And, uh, but when they create, but you have an essence that if you create a thought form and you put any of your consciousness into it, mm -hmm. then it can think. Yes. And if it can think, it can rebel. Yes. It can find out how to eat. It can, and it, and it would be something that's never lived before. Yes. And it's just a being mm -hmm. that's like an elemental being, mm -hmm. something that you, that it's not human. Right. But it has human consciousness. It, it's like half and half. But uh, so they can't go on into a light because they're they're that's not their origin. Not hooked up in that. Yeah, they don't have that that part mm -hmm. going on. But they have a consciousness. And uh, so when people like that scientist, he was in a hospital. I caught him doing it, and he was putting the energy of a damaged little girl spirit and recorded that into the hospital that they were going to, the old and abandoned hospital. And he was wanting to see if psychics picked it up, which they did. And he created a... But when I saw it, I realized it was weird because it had information in it, but she was like... She was very stiff. 
Okay. She looked like a cork bobbing in the water. She was like an image okay. with information, like uh, something you would get off the internet, but, you know, mm-hmm. something computer-created. But she she had a consciousness, but just enough, and it was very bizarre. So people were picking it up. Well, he goes, well, that's cool, and he walked off. And I thought, you created a sad, damaged energy and left it running. And, you know, some people come in, and now they talk to Mary and all that stuff. And they, the more they give their information, they can absorb right. that information and have more consciousness. How long did it uh, take him to produce one of these things? How, how, uh, how well, it, well, the witches I knew that used to do fetches, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it just uh, depends. I mean, uh, uh, I knew somebody who would make things to send out to get information, and it would go out and pick up. Your aura has about 36 to 48 hours worth of information at any time. Mm-hmm. And your aura is like a little sphere of energy. So if you have something magnetically that has your information or your, your energy trail, they send it to it. It kind of picks up that, like static electricity, it picks up whatever information is around you, comes back in an orbit to the person who created it, and it downloads into their aura, and they pick up the information. Okay. Well, and I've done people do little fetches like that, and then, you know, after, but after a while, those can be put on like a timer thing. You know, you're only, they send them out, and they disintegrate after a certain time. It because they aren't giving them consciousness. Right. They're just sending out a fiber optic energy to pick up information and bring it mm-hmm. back. Uh, but I also knew someone who created fetches by using corpses and dead animals and uh, things like that. And those things, so when he died, they just kept going. Oh, my God. That's... And because he took the information out of a dead person named Martha. And would use it, and he would tell everybody, oh, that's my little uh, thing. I've had it since my uh, childhood and all that, and it was a bunch of bull. And I mean, that thing would go, he would send it out to scare people, to take spells, to hurt people. Wow. Uh, And it didn't like it. And when he died, I mean, when he died, I'm sure it did some stuff to him. He was scared of it. Uh, before the end of his life. What is that time? And, yeah. and then that thing is still alive out there. And it has its own function. And it wasn't mm-hmm. something that needed to be out there. Right. Uh, he just, because of the ego, he wanted to scare people. And it worked. I mean, it was pretty scary. <laughs> well, but, but if you're also, telling me towards the end, even he was scared of it. So that He was tells scared you of it me. because they don't like being forced. Right. Like people, if it has enough consciousness of you, if you don't like it, something, it's going to be the same way. It's not going to like being made to do things against its will. And people are doing that kind of crap. Uh, maybe not with the dead corpses, but they're, but you can create thought forms and send them out there and all that stuff. But you're, if it has your information, because you created it, right. it has your DNA code. Yeah. And if it goes out to do stuff and all that, eventually it's going to go, well, I don't need to look, go anywhere. I can just eat your energy. And then they die of, like, uh, leukemia and cancer and right. things like that. They'll liquefy because it's eating their, it gets into their, uh, it eats the iron out of their blood, you know. Yeah. And, it, ca- uh, it cannibalizes the creator. It cannibalizes the creator. And uh, so that's, uh, and when I was, used to be a Gen I knew, it, I, I came, when I was in mysticism there, when I was young, I was like, from 18 to 28, I was around, these, was around different, well, I was training being a gardener, and, and you would meet all these people who thought they were a little magician, mm-hmm. and the, every guy, magician that I ever knew, they'd go, Oh, you just don't know what you're talking about. I can control that. Oh, well, 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 well. clunk. They'd fall over dead, you know. <laughs> uh, a couple of years later, every time they they would learn, they would go, well, I want to strike that person, and they'd create this crap. And then they would kill them. And 
each one of them would always go, you just don't know what you're talking about. I can control that. Well, yeah. clunk. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I can count on my hand several of them that, you know, they all thought they knew what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And they all died very young. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and they all died of consumptive energies and consumptive diseases. Really? So, so you have to be careful. I tell people, you better be careful doing that crap because they, people don't understand your orbit because you have a little sphere around you and we're like the planet. And when you mm-hmm. send something out, it goes around an orbit and you send it out to hurt somebody, you better be prepared for the combat. And uh, I've known technicians who know how to coat it with sugar and kind of, you know, send it out there so that if it comes back to them, it will um, it will come back as nice to them, you know, but it, it, it only triggers if the person does something bad uh, towards the individual. But, um, but mostly, you know, but there are people out there creating some really new, messed up, weird stuff that... Uh, we don't even know the ramifications of it because I mean, it's stuff that's here in our, in our dimensional layer. I think so. so you're not just getting ghosts. Because they produce something. I think at the beginning that they're surprised it actually works. Yes. <laughs> it, it, you know, oh. like they get results and then they get seduced into, of course, like what you described, I can control yes. this. Oh, they all think they can control it. And I'm like, you can't control it any more than you can a wild horse or a kid. Or, a, you know, because you could have a child, give it all the love you want, and it could still go out, you know, I hate you, I hate you, I want to cut you, you know. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's ego. Yeah. And, uh, and the people nowadays, too, when they create these things, in the old days when they created stuff like that, they didn't have distractions. They didn't have internet. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have, you know, they their life revolved around what they needed to do, and they kept right. track of everything. Mm-hmm. Now we're bored. We get bored so easy and right. distracted, and everybody has ADHD. And you create something that's a thinking, acting form, and you send it out there, it's going to entertain itself. Right. And it's like, okay, well, I'm done with that, like, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, those people that they, 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 it's like a toy. They think, well, I'm bored with it. I'll put yeah. it away. And it's like, well, it's not an inanimate object. No, it's not an inanimate object. It's the, the, the gas is still going. Yes. And then if they find out too, now some of them, if they don't know how to eat or how to use the existing material around them to function, Eventually, what will happen is the plasma they're made out of will thicken up, congeal, harden, and then eventually the energies will break it down and they get reabsorbed into dimensional layers. And uh, But if they learn to eat, it's on. They can live, they can go wherever they want, you know, uh, and mostly with, uh, there's two times of the year the veil is thin. You get more activity in... There's May 1st and November 1st. And in the summer, you get more spiritual activity because it's warm. And plasma is like gelatin. So if it's warm, it's fluid. And they can function and they do it. And then in the winter, I mean, in near Samhain, which is Halloween and stuff for us, uh, the, uh, it gets cooler. So when it gets cooler, the plasma thickens up. They kind of hibernate until spring, unless they can live in a house that's got, you know, central heat and air or, you know, something to eat. Okay. And uh, so and uh, so mostly what I have to do a lot <laughs> down here is people have a lot of weird things in their houses, and I have to go, and I, what you do is you change, you, you smudge, and you do all this, but you have to use all four elements. You have to use water with salt and air and fire and something that's grounding and that you you set a circle you smoke it out right. and draw a circle and keep it out if you don't do the circle uh, with the salt water and all that what happens is once the smoke clears up they just come back in right. you smoke them out 
they can't handle that kind of heavy material. But if you smoke them out and they come back, they, they go out and then you shut them out. If you don't shut them out, they just come back. They come back. And uh, they'll go back out when you smudge again. Yes. You know? Yes. So, the, 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 uh, the, the, um, there's, let me ask you real quick. Um, I, I've heard of some Hulu traditions where they also use ammonia. Have you ever? Yes. Yes. And uh, for me, now I know in video, I think um, I've heard someone in video, I think, use ammonia. Uh, but a lot of what I've used before is vinegar. Oh, okay. Because what happened, and that is a video thing, where uh, the old lady video practitioners, when they wanted to cleanse their house, mm -hmm. you know, it was before carpets, you know. Right. Uh, you had tile or, you know, wood or whatever. But uh, a lot of these lower frequency energies are overwhelmed by smell. Mm -hmm. So they'll leave for a little while if you have vinegar uh, smell. So you put vinegar in your mop water, you mop it, let it dry, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you can do your circle cleanse or whatever. Uh, but vinegar, garlic, I've heard, I've uh, used to do a thing where if you were pushing something out, you know, crush up some garlic, put it in a bowl, a paper bowl, mm -hmm. uh, in the floor, put a hot bowl of vinegar in the center of the floor, put vinegar, I mean, uh, garlic pieces in a paper bowl around in the windows, and it will drive all sorts of things out because they right. can't handle that smell or that smoke. And then when, uh, when it's out, let it sit there for an hour, then go back, Take, you know, put gloves on, throw all of that stuff away right. because it absorbs. And I mean, the garlic absorbs, right. but the vinegar repels. So go throw all of that away and then do your smudging. Right. Uh, but uh, all of those really heavier energies can be run off with stink and with smell. They don't like it. Do you think but, that's where, where uh, you get I that think, thing about vampires and the garlic thing? Yes, probably because, whew, you know, if you've yeah. never dated anyone that likes to eat garlic like an apple, uh, which I have, uh, it's like, ooh, you can tell when it was garlic day. Yeah. You open the door, you know, it's like your hair would just kind of singe off. <laughs> and the uh, same thing, it's just bad breath, you know. Uh, but but they, they, the lower frequency things have more problems with, with smells like that. But if you don't do something to keep them out, they'll come back after the smell is gone. And so a lot of people will go and buy a smudge stick and think that should mm -hmm. fix the problem. Right. And that's why you have to use salt water and you have to do you have to use a light the neurons up in your head and see the light. You know, when people say see the light, mm -hmm. that's the neuron in your brain shooting off, and that's how you can download and pick up, and your spirit will download into. Um, through the third eye and into a dimensional layer when it dies, and it'll see the light and go to the light and download. Uh, so, but you you see the light at the top of your head and see it in your hand and go in a clockwise manner and draw a line around and uh, and say you know sir, uh, spirits of ill will, ill intent cannot will not cross this line. Do that with the light. Do that with the water. Do it with the salt in it, do that with the smudge, and 98% of the time, that will take care of the problem. And if you have rooms that don't have carpet, wipe them down with a little vinegar in it, and uh, takes care of a lot. You know, I bet. I takes bet. care of a lot. Let me ask you, do you think, yeah. and, and I mean, I've, I've heard of this, like, you know how they say, uh, <clears throat> that sometimes people will move into a house or an apartment and all of a sudden things start going south for them personally. And eventually they trace yeah. it back once they moved into this certain place. And it's not necessarily because there's ghosts, but there's like a psychic imprint, let's say the family yeah. that was there before. Yeah. Or dysfunctional. It's like a waxy buildup. Right. Yeah. Would you do the same thing uh, to dispel like just an yeah. imprint? That yeah. Yes, that would be like cleaning away a waxy buildup. Because what mm -hmm. you've done is you've moved into just, it's kind of like a tar buildup. It's like sticking your hand in, you know, into a tar 
tar tar pit. Right. You know? It's you've you've made in and all this old energy, which is good to cleanse your house before you move in. Right. Do a house blessing, do a house cleansing, because you're moving in on whoever's been there. And uh, and every house I move into, I do something because you you don't know what those people were experiencing. They could have been great people. Mm-hmm. They could have been they could have been having all sorts of trouble. They could have been right. ill. Yes, and I remember all of that, that happening with there. um with sick rooms. You know, like they'll have somebody that maybe had a like a long term yeah. illness where they had a certain room for this person. Um, yeah. because you know sometimes at the hospital, if it's just a question of they don't keep you, they send you home. And I've heard of certain sick rooms uh being you know it affects the people that use that room. Yeah, where that person and it's. Uh... Oh, yeah, because now we've gone back to, you know, used to in the old days, there really weren't that many hospitals. Right. And so the people would stay at home, the doctor would come to the house. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you died, they would have a funeral service for you, and everybody would come see you in the casket and the home. And then we got away from that. And uh, now we're going back to it where it's people die with the help of hospice, but they die right, at home. Right, right, Yeah, they'll have uh, and maybe so, a visiting nurse or hospice. Yeah, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, because when I was young, you know, I went out the last... In the 70s, I went to a relative's funeral in the country that they had his funeral at home, and I, I thought, ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, now I'm kind of like, oh, well, that was kind of sweet, but not, you know, I'd rather take him to the funeral home. And, because, uh, you know, you know, you want them to go on. And, uh, but now when you're now thousands and thousands of people a year are dying at home. Yes. And then a lot of times those people, they die, the house has to be sold or re-rented. Mm-hmm. You just moved in yeah. to that energy. Yes. That doesn't necessarily have to be a ghost. It's mm-hmm. just, you're moving, you're waiting in other people's residue. Yes. And yes. it's like waiting through waste. Mm-hmm. And so you cleanse it and make your own space. And then when you leave, clean it, clean it again, you know. Right, right. And a lot of people, you know, they get fooled. They go to a place and it's newly painted. It looks clean. And that's as far as they go. It's like they're, re- they're ready to yeah. move in. And they just sometimes don't realize. They, are they And they have no way of knowing who or, or what was no. going on in the private lives of whoever lived there. Oh, no. And then, you know, I like watching these TV shows where they show, you know, all that stuff going on. Yeah, I know. You know, and and I'm like, you know, and there's some of it. I watch Franco TV and and Nukes. The the supposed pillars of society were not that pillared. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and then there's some of the stuff they're looking at. I'm like, ooh, I wouldn't want to live there. You know, (laughs) or ooh, I would take care of that. Like when I moved in here and this thing was giving me trouble, I chased it off. Uh-huh. And uh, I was like, you know, but I told her that before, and I said, if you leave me alone, you're okay. You know, you cross the line, you're out. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. And yeah. uh, that's why they come to psychics and stuff like that to do it. And then there's a lot of psychics who don't know how to do it properly because right. they'll just take a smudge stick, go around, and think that's it. Right. And uh, you you really have to use energy, use your energy, because everyone has a source. Uh, their their aura is really like a sphere of info. It's your 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 viral protection, mm-hmm. and um, and you can use that energy to draw boundaries and do all sorts of stuff. But uh, but yeah, you know, people move into these places and then see things that they don't know what to do with, and you know. It's uh, and some of it's really serious, and some of it's just irritating. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mark, let me ask and, you. And when, the last time we spoke, you had just come out within the darkest corner, and we were talking about necromancy. And after that, several news stories have come out about people that have had funeral homes, and they've discovered yep. that these people have caches of human remains. Um, yeah. And you're thinking, okay, was what, what's going on here? Is this a question of being lazy, money, or is there that. some darker 
Like, what's going on? This is so... Well, I mean, I live next to... Uh, I lived over the ridge from um, Tri-County, the one, you know, back in 1990s that the, um, uh, they found 350 bodies. Okay. And uh, the guy was playing with them. He had a, a crematory. And he was going, when they caught him, he was going, oh, well, uh, it was broken. Well, they went in there and they went, not so much. They pushed the button, it worked. It didn't work great, <laughs> but it worked. And but what we thought, what well, in my opinion, and I, I will say it allegedly, mm-hmm. I believe, uh, that he was selling some of the parts to um, medical supply houses. Yeah, and I also, what. Something that's going on, too, is these graphs and things. They're getting, uh, we use corpse, corpses, we've always used corpses as medicine. Mm-hmm. In the old days, you know, people would drink blood and things like that to cure things with blood issues or bleed people right. because they thought you needed to get the, the blood out of you with the bad stuff, and then the right. people would die from bleeding. Uh, but... Uh, the, we heard from a, a rumor from a person that lived in the area that knew that individual said, well, they were selling, bone, you know, possibly selling, allegedly selling the uh, uh, bone and skin. Because when you die, they ask for your skin or body parts, and they take those and give them, you know, use them on people who have been burned or right. who need bone grafts or who need marrow transplants. Right. Well, some of these funeral homes are making money doing that, and give it. And also, you have to do it within like eighteen. It has to be really watched and done. They're just right, taking right. off that people what I giving it. And you know, the, you know, the, 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 even the organ harvesting it is like a window of time. That they a window of time, it. and it has to be done. So, you know, so so, and they're giving these bone grafts and and skin grafts and things to people that. Uh, are getting infections or it's rejecting them. But of course, because they were left too long or they weren't done correctly or you don't even know what disease that person had because no test has been done because they just went in and took it off a dead person. And then there's just an element of some of these people seem to get overwhelmed. Right. And they just pile up bodies. Because I'm thinking to myself, and, let's, 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 let's say, let's say, you know, you know, you hear once upon a time, you know, the resurrectionist who would be selling off the bodies sure. for anatomy. That's okay. Because these universities, sure. okay, they, they, that was strictly, you could tell, that was a pro- profit thing. But then you hear, and then you think, okay, what if, like you said, we have a modern day with certain parts, but you would think, okay, once I get what I get, I'm burning this thing. Like, this is, <laughs> I'm not going to let this, like, uh, evidence be used against no. me. But it, it's like, what it gives an aspect, like, there's something here like that okay upstairs with some of these people like yeah. uh, or or in some cases you know if, if we're not talking uh, a psychological problem it makes you think were they doing something on a spiritual level were they using some of these corpses or well now there is a funeral home that if you look at voodoo funeral home mm-hmm. there is in Florida I think it was in Miami. No. Uh, I can't remember just off the cover of that, but there was a funeral home because they found this hand that had been cut off. It was in a river, right? And they found it, and it had been uh, prepared. It had had formaldehyde, so they knew it came from a prepared body. Right. So they ran the fingerprints and found out the man had died and been buried. They did have a fingerprint, so they went and dug him up. Of course, the hand was cut off. And not only was the hand cut off, uh, there was a, uh, the, the woman that was working in the uh, funeral home was voodoo priestess. So she had packed his corpse with like 50 little voodoo dolls and, toward her enemies. And wow. she was using the corpses after the funeral so when people weren't looking. She was cutting off the hands to make hands of glories and, and stuffed them full of voodoo dolls and were using them for spells. Yeah. And she had done the spell with the hand and throw it in the river. And that's the only way she got caught. And she had done that to who knows how many. But they, yeah, but of course, realize. it was she didn't kill somebody to do it. She had used the body. Right, I know that. They're, so, they're going to be very lucrative. 
Uh, people don't understand that for some oh. of these things, people will pay oh, yeah. a lot of money. They'll pay a lot of yeah. money for certain body parts or bones, uh, things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's. <laughs> but yeah, lately I had, and I hate to say it, it was like I sometimes see those stories. I remember your conversation with you, and I'm like, you know what? You want to look at it from uh, like you said. You know, they got overwhelmed, they ran out of money, or like that guy is saying, my crematorium is not working anymore. But some yeah. of the stuff is really hard. Weird. Yeah, weird. Really, well, really the weird. guy in, yeah, in the Tri County one, he had 350 bodies. He was playing with some of them, he was posing them, taking oh. pictures. Uh, but there was another man that got caught uh, a couple of years ago that he was an elderly man. He felt like he had to help everyone that came in, and there were bodies that people didn't have the money to um, prepare them, and he was going to try and cover that. Well, he would have to get permission from the state to cremate those bodies, and they wouldn't give him permission. So he he, he got over one of the bodies he couldn't get rid of, and he got closed down because of it, and then later on let him come back and have more storage space and have the thing. He, he wasn't doing anything illegal with the bodies. He just right. got overwhelmed and was afraid to... He didn't want to punish, you know, poor families that right. just really didn't know what to do with them. Uh, but he, they came up, they fixed that problem. But then there's some funeral homes where, you know, a few years ago there was one, they had like 11 baby yes. corpses up in the roof of the carport the you know there were bodies stacked up and and that kind of thing it's a place for a stick up if you've never been around a dead body right it's not something you know if you have a rotten corpse in your building somewhere yes. someone's going to find it out of course and uh, unless you've really wrapped it in tupperware and um so some of these, it's like they don't have a good explanation what they were doing. And, of course, then then it comes out a lot of them are making money selling parts. Uh, right. But then I'm like you. I would be like a three-legged cat covering up, you know. Uh, I'd be I'd be making sure those bodies went somewhere. You know, I would not yeah. be just stacking them up like going, well, I'll take care of that 10 bodies tomorrow. Yeah. You know. And uh, I mean, I know, going, for example, yeah. I heard like in um... – Los Angeles, if you know, if they have a, uh, let's say if they have a John Doe or a Jane Doe, yeah, I think they hold the body for like a year, but then after a year they cremate them because yeah. if they can't, and uh, I think a lot of medical examiners do that. Like they, in other words, they give X amount of time for the identification to be made. Yeah, and then they cremate them, but you know they keep some uh, DNA and prints and stuff in case somebody ever comes in case a question comes up yeah Mm -hmm. well actually i know a case of a friend whose brother just they hadn't seen him he had disappeared you know he'd Mm -hmm. kind of got on off the sun they hadn't heard him 17 years since she found out like you know a few months uh ago you know that he had um passed Right. And the state, they gave him a funeral. They, they, yes. He was a, an unclaimed body. They gave him a funeral. They buried him in a uh, pauper cemetery in a really pretty place. Yeah. And sometimes the states will do that. Sometimes the states have gotten where they don't want to do that. And they'll say, in Tennessee, you can send the body to the body farm. Oh, yeah, and that place where anyone, they look, they study the composition. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, when they studied the composition. Because uh, I worked for a witch lady. They didn't want, when her daddy died, they were sitting there going, we don't, they didn't want to pay for his funeral or anything like that. And I, and I got mad at them. Because, see, you know, they were living off the money he had made. And I thought, hey, well, why don't you call the money for him? And she went, oh, that's a great idea. And then, shoop, there it went. And I thought, I felt bad after it because I was like, I was much younger. And I was like, ooh, that's, I don't think I would be sending my family member to the body farm. But some people, it's all right, you know. I mean, you can try to send them to hospitals for, uh, leave your body to science. But they get overwhelmed with that. So the body farm does have a use and does do that. 
But, uh, but I mean, but in Tennessee, you know, a lot of them will offer that if you don't have the money, because they're all all they're interested in is in that ten thousand dollars, you know. Oh yeah. Um, if you ain't got the money, I mean, they'll go. You're just out of luck. And um, oh. and in some places, well, there's poplars cemetery, but I mean, but a lot, but there's been a lot of you know home directors. They'll say they have bodies stacked up. They have them in an old. I mean. And old hearses that are broken down, and yeah. you know, I'm like, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know the mentality. I don't know what's going on. Well, there. let me tell you something. I, I've also heard the medical examiner. Sometimes they know exactly who it is, but the family can't afford funerals like nothing. The basic, even, and the family yeah. is like, it's, in other words, they know exactly who this is, but the family says, look, keep, you know, we're not going to claim the body. And you can't force yes. somebody to take the body, in other words. To take a body. And then they have to do something with it. Yes. Yep. And that's how, and those will sit around. And I thought, I could never imagine not taking up, you know, yeah, a but relative. People, but people uh, and now you can get them, yeah, you can get a cremation for a thousand bucks. You know, and you can even get a payment plan. But a lot of people do that. They'll just say, no, they just won't return their clothes and won't go pick them up. Yeah. Yes. And um, it's uh, so it, it's a whole new ball game. But yeah, but you can if you look online, just met, you know, there's a lot of messed up funeral home stories, a lot of messed up necrophilia stories, people playing with bodies because there's so many people now that that have grown up with uh, their they don't know how to talk to people. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to connect with people. They can't. They're having classes in colleges to teach you to talk to people, because they can't. They can't relate to people. They can't get mates. They can't get dates. Right. And and so I can understand how some of these people go. You know, oh, they just say, "Well, it's a dead body." Well, I don't. They don't have to talk to me. You know, yeah. it's kind of a movement. And uh, I, I think it's disgusting and gross. But I understand how it's doing because people are not afraid of corpses they're afraid of real people well and people don't understand also that handling dead bodies you can get a lot of diseases and infections if you don't oh well yeah i have a story from china i just uh, so happened uh back in the 80s there was a girl that died they buried her in a um well they there was a real fancy you know uh cemetery called forest hill and they're a beautiful place and um, somebody desecrated her grave. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of work to do nowadays. Yes. You know, I mean, you're talking casket, monument. But they, she was a 16-year-old girl. Someone did her up and molested the body. Oh. They didn't know who did it until this guy went in the emergency room and had blood poisoning. And what had happened is he and his friend had done that for whatever purpose. They never did tell why they did it, but it's probably ritual or something weird. Yeah, I was and say. they they had sex with her body, but they didn't use protection, and they got blood poisoning from the embalming fluid, and they both died terribly. What? They couldn't do anything for them. What dummies! Did you hear what about dummies. the one? And did, um, I want to say this happened like five, six, seven years ago. I, I want to say it was Texas. Oh God, I can't remember the name. A girl, she she was sick. She had a boyfriend, and I, I can't remember if she was ill or she died. But she was young, 1920. And s- the body had already been taken to the funeral home. And somebody yeah. stole it from the funeral home. I and remember of, that story. As of today, they still have not found her. They, they pointed the finger at her boyfriend, which she had broken up with. And he's like, no, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And they've yeah. never found and this it, poor girl's body. No, one day they'll, someone will die and they'll find her, uh, you know, stuck in a container. Or, yes. But there's there was one just a couple of years ago, actually, uh, that um, uh, this, guy, this guy had a girlfriend living with him, and he was kind of had problems, mental problems. Mm-hmm. And his mother hadn't seen the girlfriend in a while. She went and asked him about it, and she found the dead girl in his closet. And he said, oh, that's my sex toy. That's not a, 
person that's my sex doll. Oh. And and he had, she had died. They don't know how she died, if he killed her or what. Mm -hmm. But the mother found her. And uh, he just, he had dehumanized her so much. She was just a thing. And, uh, and too, you know, I mean, in, in China, they're trying, there's a big thing about sex dolls, human sized sex dolls that mm -hmm. they are really worried about because they're afraid it will lead to necrophilia. Right. And, uh, but it's, um, it's just something about these people who just cannot deal with real people. Yeah. And, I mean. uh, it's scary. But yeah, the girl getting stolen out of the funeral home, mm -hmm. that, that, uh, I, you know, I don't know. It looks like there would be, I don't know how someone did that. So I, there's usually I mean, the so ones, many people. Obviously that you feel about is her family because. Yeah. Let's face oh, horrible. It, it's she's dead, and it's like, and I, it, 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 I guess the thing is nobody thinks that that stuff happens. What do you mean? Somebody took oh. her body. Yeah, uh, they. No. She's not here. What do you mean she's not there? <laughs> yeah. Oh well, there. I mean, I think her name is Lisa Wendell. Something but she, like that. Um, yeah. There was there, there was a girl necrophiliac who was. She was taking a, a young man's body to the grave site. She got to the grave. The family's sitting there, and she decided she wasn't letting the body go. She did a donut, took off, kept the body for like four or five days, and then they finally caught her. And she admitted that she had uh, been, you know, doing this for a while. And I thought, and the parents, you know, I mean, here the parents are waiting at the funeral, seeing their kid come out, you know, going to bury their son. And she steals her body. And I thought, I don't know what goes through your mind. What do you, how do you process that? You know, uh, you know, that somebody just stole your, right. from the West, your, your relative's body. I don't know how I would deal with that. I'd probably pick up a stick and beat somebody yeah. really hard. <laughs> I um, it's like, it's, it's, it's I, just I, the, 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 it's very disturbing. Uh, and yeah. I mean, these are people I think with social anxiety, but they've just fallen off the edge of the, you know, the, 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 uh, just, just something. I imagine there's gotta be a psychological aspect to it. Um, yeah. where, and, and these are the ones I'm giving you the benefit, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that there's no, um, dark magic going on. These are people that are just strictly, like you said, whether it's social anxiety or, oh, yeah. Uh, or like in some cases, they, if it was a, a love thing going on, who knows? Uh, yeah. Who knows? And and very few of them are magically uh, centered. It's very, but you know, but people like that usually turn everything into a ritual of some sort, whether it's a spiritual ritual or just something that makes sense in their head. Uh, but you just, uh, I, I, I mean, it goes beyond my comprehension, but the problem, the reason I started writing the book mm -hmm. is that I started on those, which they're, they're very funky, but they're real stories. And I thought, and two, they're kind of like a social thing because it's not, it's not going away. It's not getting less. It's getting more. Yes. And uh, and we're just raising a lot of a generation of a lot of kids who just they cannot relate to breathing, talking, thinking people. They can't deal with rejection. And everybody, no. oh, come on, no. think about it, Mark. Everybody, all of us, even the prettiest, whatever, everybody's had to deal oh. with rejection at some point in their lives. Romantic oh, or otherwise, okay. oh. and it's difficult, but you get over it. But yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like nobody likes rejection, but it's part of life. Hello, it's, it's a part of life, and they're not being taught to function with that. Because I, when I was young, I was really in a, I was in a really funky family, and um, uh, they, they were just like, if you know, if it's bad, tough, tough, you know, suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. And if you got beat, you know, if I came, got beat at school, I'd come home and get beat at home. Right. So, beaten up. <laughs> yeah. So get beaten up for being beat up. Yeah. So, but 
I, in high school, I, I wanted to be in this dancing group. Well, of course, I was, you know, awkward and weird and everything else. But I tried and tried and tried, and I got turned down three times. And then finally I made it. And I and when people would reject me, I would just go. I would take that as a challenge, mm-hmm. and uh, and I never just let it stop me. But nowadays, I know kids that they can't. They've never gone through that. I don't know what. Uh, they don't have the oomph that you have to have. You have to. You know, yeah. the world is full of rejection. Yeah. And. It is. And if you, but if you ask, you know, if you want to dance or something like that, you know, you can ask 10 people. One of those 10 people will accept unless you're really something really wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know, which that's a whole different kettle of fish. But you don't give up. You learn to adapt. Right. But, uh, but, but if they, but if they don't have to ask permission, they can do whatever they want, and they don't have to ask permission. They don't have to feed that person. They don't have right. to close that person. They don't have to take them on date. And to them, it is a simple thing. You know, uh, with with Ted Bundy, yes. he had a certain look. He would take these corpses and redo their hair, redo their makeup, dress them a certain different way, right. and, and keep going back to the corpse until there was no corpse. And uh, and that was his fantasy. Right, right, exactly. That was and, and it's that like that ritualistic, whatever, yeah. and, and it just that circuit in his brain that did that that got that reward, or yes. like they, or, or uh-huh. they had a preference, and they were gonna make that whatever was at hand. You know how they say when you got lemons, you make lemonade. Yes. Well. He, yeah. yeah he, he made it lemonade one way or the other. Uh, yes. To fit into that preconceived idea of whatever was driving him. For God knows why. Uh, and, and, you know, and part of profiling some of these um, killers is not all the time, but that they prefer certain types or looks or. Yes. You know. They have a type. They have a type. That, 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 they have a type. Right. Yeah, exactly. And people don't realize that there's something stuck in there in the groove that this is the really what they want. And, um, yes, it's, it's, it's like, it's and almost like it obsessive. Whatever yeah, yeah, there's a and lot of that. And there is a, the killer, I think his name is Dennis Nielsen in England. They called the British drummer. And he was, when they caught him, the first thing he said was, uh, the end of a day, end of another drink, end of another life. Oh, what a philosopher. And and he just um, didn't care. They don't, right. they, I mean, and those people really, it's one thing if someone goes and gets a corpse and has sex with it, if they didn't kill the person, right? then that's, uh, it's a totally different thing but it's it's like the guy that the russian doll guy he didn't kill the children mm-hmm. but he took the bodies home right uh but he's in a mental place but there's a possibility they'll let him out because they don't keep you in mental places forever right and uh he might get back out and go do it again and most um, of them can't and that's the truth a lot of them for lack of a better word, cannot help themselves. They cannot help themselves. And a lot of people enable the activity because, I mean, like his parents saw him have these life-size dolls laying around, yeah. thrown all over his apartment, uh, and there was possibly a strange odor, but they were like, oh, well, he just has a weird collection. Yeah, you know hobby. what, the, the, that's like, what, who was it? Was it, Ed, was it Ed? No, was it Ed Geener? Who was the one that? Oh my God! The one that would dress up as a clown—I can't remember the one that had a bunch of oh, them. Oh, Gacy. Gacy, Wayne Gacy, Gacy. That he had him on. And I think it was does, does no, nobody picked up on that bad smell. Always at that house, like hello, that place must no. have smelled, must have reeked. Well, oh yeah, but see, people don't want to get involved. Yeah. And Dahmer, people heard his screams. Mm-hmm. They heard saws going at two and three in the morning. They heard screams. They heard things this, that, and that. 
and no one wanted to be involved. Yeah. And uh, and I've seen that for myself, where people have been attacked, and you know, group forty people standing around watching. Not one call to the police. Not one. They don't want to be involved, but they want to watch. Yeah. And uh, I think there should be a good Samaritan law. If you hear something or see something, yeah. you better get your ass on the phone and call somebody. Yes. Of course. And uh, <laughs> because what if it is something like that? Yes. You know. Uh, I mean, I, I, we I, I, we. How can I say? I'm not talking about every little thing. You mean there has to be some type of common sense, but you kind of like exactly what you described. If you know, if there's yeah. a very unusual a decomposing body puts out a stench that's not common. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 there's certain things that uh, it's like it doesn't it doesn't take a stretch to say. That's really weird. That's unusual. Uh, like I, I, oh, like yeah. I, 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 in other words, you might be one of these neighbors. I mind my own business, except when it smells like a dead body. <laughs> when it smells like a dead person, <laughs> and uh, like I said, you know, if you've ever experienced it before, which I'm sorry if you have, because I have, mm -hmm. and because um, I got taken onto a site where a guy had been, they had, you know, he had been, they had found. They'd found everything except the arms and the legs. Ooh. And uh, they took me to the place where the guy was killed in the house. Oh. And, oh, you know, uh, once you're exposed to it, you there's nothing else like it. You can't say that's a dead dog, that's a dead horse, a dead goat. Right. It is a person. And um, I don't know. I don't know. We're, we live in a society where people just, stick their heads in the dirt, they don't want to be involved, or right. it's entertainment. Or they want to chronicle it, you know, so they can post it. Yeah. Like, they, man, this is really great kind of stuff, stick, why stop it? Yeah, there's some kind of primitive thing going on. The thing that's being done is primitive, and the response of the, the viewer is primitive as well. That's like kids that are filming kids beating each other up. Yeah. Uh, it the person watching is enjoying it and the person being beaten is being engaged in a primitive uh, event. It's primitive on both sides. And now we've got people with cameras. You know, they if there's something going on and something needs to be saved, they have to film it first. And that's the part I don't get, especially when there's like an emergency kind of situation like Oh. What are you doing filming this? Go help this person. Go help this person. Right, drop and the And it's phone. like and they film them, and then yeah. they're, they're kind of co-conspirators. Right, They're exactly. going, oh, yeah, he's going to die. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah, go yeah. call a cop. Pick up a stick. You know, yeah, do something. Or, or, or it's some type of emergency, whether it, it's like, okay, you got your priorities really, I mean, mixed up, where you're thinking uh, that, that you need to get this because you're going to upload it. And in the meantime, uh, seconds are going by that are critical. But you got to get, yes. uh, yeah, I've seen that, and that's, you, I think that that's that's disturbing. Yeah. It's and you shallow. watch these shows where they rescue pets or little stray animals and stuff, and they spend all this time looking at this poor little creature crying and needing to be. And I'm like, I would have just reached down and picked up the animal. Of course. And they have to spend thirty minutes sitting there going, "Oh, see, look at." It's a trauma. It's just, I'm like, no crap. Put down no, the camera and save that, that, that animal. That. Everybody, you know, everybody wants to be a a, 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 a movie star. director, a Spielberg. You know, it's like, stop it. You know, stop it's it. like, put the damn camera down and react like a human being. Yes. And step yes. in there and take care of it. Exactly. And uh, and then you know, I mean, and we've seen it. You know, with people being attacked and being killed and. Yes. And people just sit around and watch it like it is a movie. And they're watching it yes. through the viewfinder. So they're not even thinking it's real. Yeah. In a way. Yes. I and uh, I just, I think we need to re... There's a lot of things in society. I think we need to start teaching kids to be people. Yes. And uh, we need to say you need to have empathy. Because there's a huge lack of empathy. Oh, absolutely. If I see something happening, uh, if I see someone get hit in the head, I mean, that hurts my head. 
Yes. I feel, you know, I feel empathy with that person or with that animal. Or, you know, I can't watch and nature shows where something gets eaten because I'm just, I'm like, I can't. Yeah. I mean, I have a thing about animals. I'm like, I can't watch animals. Go, yeah. Now, watch, I'll watch a zombie movie all day long because <laughs> it's not real. I'll, right. I love to watch a zombie or a blob eat something. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, so as long as it's not an animal, eat all the people you want. But, uh, but in real life, no, no. You know, I, it's I, like, you know, the thing you jump, you have to, you have to jump into action. And it's it's like all of them are inactive. As long as they're not getting hurt, it's okay. Right, right. Everybody wants to be part of the audience and yeah, and be famous. Yeah, uh, and be famous, or you know, like yeah, I've seen that. It's, and you know what I think sometimes is disturbing, especially when these young people, because you always want to think yeah. of when you're young, being very idealistic. You know, like yes. Oh, yeah. you, you're going to be part of the solution. You're not going to let somebody get beaten up or, or an animal. And in other words, and, and you don't see that. Sometimes you do see that, which, by the way, I love to see those videos. But then other times you see, like, this total disconnect. And I'm like, that, uh, that this is not good, man. You're not going to, you know, it, I hope you get snap out of it. Because if not, you're going to be a horrible adult when yeah. down the road. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I came from a generation, of course, where in the 60s and 70s, you know, there were a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, action. Right. You, you don't sit there. Get up and say something. Get up and do something. Get out there and yeah. and show show what you think. Don't sit there on your butt. Yes. And, um, and that's a different thing. I mean, it's not, you see it sort of happening, but some of it's kind of, it's a different mentality. Uh, it's not happening quite like it used to, but people are doing stuff. It's not bad for people to get up and do action, but but you know, but some of it is just too. It's so um, disconnected. Yes. yes. And I just I don't know what you know. I'm glad I don't have children. Well, it's, it's I, almost I want to say in some cases calculating because before. I might say before, oh, yeah. people would jump into action and they wouldn't start trying to think about, calculate, well, if I do that, am I going to get in trouble? You know what? Yeah. So you would just yeah. do it and that's it. If someone needed help, oh, you yeah. do it. And um, there's a lot of people, like you say, they like, okay, do I really want to be a witness to this? No, I guess I'll just leave. Hey, you know, what that Yeah, person? or I'll just, yeah, they, they don't, they'll leave someone being killed. Yeah, exactly. And not, and so uh, and so I just don't want to see that. Uh, I had a friend who, who was, uh, actually got murdered years later. Mm -hmm. But if he saw someone picking on you right. or starting a fight with you, he was in on it. He would jump in there and somebody was getting their tail whipped. Right. And he didn't hesitate. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't any, you know, he would jump in front of a truck for you. Right. And uh, and you just don't get that and now, you know. Yeah. You everyone is, uh, uh, and then with the children, I watched something, and I caught myself watching one video because this girl was picking on another girl, and they were filming it. They knew it was gonna. They were. I mean, these kids set it up, yeah. and the girl yeah. was gonna pick on this little cheerleader. She thought she was gonna be able to beat, and the cheerleader turned on her. And uh, all of these kids were cheerleading and, I mean, you know, cheering it on. And I thought, this is so wrong on so many levels. Yes. And because they, and, and kids are, are promoting that kind of stuff. Oh, there's going to be a fight. Let's film it. Right. Well, what if somebody gets killed? What if someone yeah. gets a broken face? What if someone gets yes. uh, loses an eye or yes. loses, you know, I mean... They don't think of anything like that. It's just entertainment. Exactly. And, there and, and, and I don't know and, what and to do a, about that. I, I, I want to say there's almost um, a psychopathic flavor to it where yeah. there's no remorse or conscience yeah. or like, hey, this is out of, uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of scary. No, re no responsibility. Like 
mm-hmm. no responsibility. Yeah. And uh, and no, it's okay to do it, and it's okay that I did it, and it's I shouldn't be punished because I just did what I did naturally. Right. Or, and yeah. uh, and these kids are going to grow up and have kids. Isn't that and, a scary thought? <laughs> and then what are those kids going to do? You know, are they going to set the house on fire? Or, you know, are they going to kill everything they yeah. see? Yeah. Uh, how can you teach a kid not to do something when... That's in your nature. Right. So, or, or, and um, I have seen it, I have seen it where they produce children who eventually grow up and then something like what we were talking about earlier about people creating those yeah. hopeful things where all of a sudden yeah. that child becomes bigger than they, like in other words, children don't stay static as children and yeah. uh, they, they, then they, then they have a big problem on their hands because they're the ones getting victimized by their own kids. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of kids that there. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying there's one child. I, I know someone who has has two children. They insisted on having two children. The first one had a lot of physical problems, almost died, and is absolutely the most beautiful, angelic child you have ever met. Beautiful. He looks like a ghost. He's beautiful. But he's intelligent. He's very, he's very reincarnated kind of thing. One time I went over and he was five years old. He did a constellation design on the carpet wow. with a turtle in the center, like they used to do. You know, I was like, um, this child is out there. You know, he's brilliant. He's real bizarre. But the, they had another child. The other child is the biggest redneck you've ever met. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible, horrifying. You cannot go, I mean, if you get in the car, he'll kick you in the back. And I mean, he doesn't do it to me. He tried, He poked yeah. me with something one time, and I, he found out not to do it. Right. And, uh, and the way, I mean, you know, I have a lot of practice with nieces and nephews. I mean, he, he didn't pull crap with me only right. once. And uh, but they're afraid to do anything to him. And that child is the biggest horror. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's horror. And uh, yes. he's, uh, he's the biggest redneck you've ever seen. And yeah, just yeah, monstrous. Yeah. And, uh, and the other one is like, you know, uh, the other one, we everyone goes, oh, yeah, he can move. He can, I'll take that child. I don't have children. I'm going to take that child. Right. In two seconds. And raise him. He's, he's. He worries about other children. He makes sure right. everyone's it's included. Like, everyone has something to do. You, po- you pointed out he has empathy. Yes. And there it's like uh, he's just a, a an incredible little being. And then the other one, you're like, oh, my God. What happened? Yeah, is it too late to take him to... Is it too late to take him to the fire department and chain him to the door or something? <laughs> yeah. And run? And I thought that sounds terrible. Back. But, I mean, I don't... They, He's going to be one there. Not going to be able to sleep. Yeah. Uh, they get, when he gets to where he figures out fire, yeah. I can see him very easily burning houses down. Yeah. And it, it, you know, and it's just one of those things. You know, you don't know. And then you get children if you have bad parents. Yeah. Sometimes you get children who go, I'm, who turn out to be great because they go, I'm going to be everything they're not. Yes. And yes. you can get a reaction like that, but a lot of times you get just. If they're strange parents, sometimes it's weirder kids. Yeah, the role of and, the dice uh, when it comes to that sometimes. Yeah, it is. And the parents are very, the husband is very smart, the wife is very smart, and, you know, <laughs> no, they, and, they, but one of, them, you're, one of them wears them down, and they're not going to be able to keep their eyes closed when they sleep. I believe it. I believe it. I've, I've, um, there was one lady who, uh, she, she had the same thing, two daughters. One was, okay, normal, like, you know, normal stuff. The other one was, like, um, just acting out as a kind word. And yeah. uh, I noticed this lady, she was, like, she looked, like, very haggard. Like, you know, when I said, are you, <laughs> are you getting enough sleep? And she, she's like, well, I said, well, I mean, have you gone to see a doctor? Maybe they can give you some. She goes, well, they have, but... Um, she had, by the way, she had had to, to, uh, hide all the knives in the house. 
Yeah. And she kind of described her a couple of times. She, this teenage daughter, I want to say maybe she was like 15. Uh, she would like wake up and find her standing at the foot of the bed just staring at her. And I'd be like, what? Uh, <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, and, I, uh, and see, unfort- see, if I ever, unfortunately for the child, if it were my child, uh-huh. see, I was raised up in the era of, you know, children should get their ass whooped. Yes. And, uh, you know, there'd be some, I think a lot of that has gone out the window now. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's pretty bad when you have to worry about your child going to kill you. Yeah. Or, like, well, what do you do? What do you do? Let me tell you, like I said, they, you know, when as long as they're young and manageable, it's different. But yeah. Children don't stay that way, they grow. And then before you know no, it, they're, they get to be the... they're taller than you mm. are, you are in some cases. Oh, yeah, and they're teenagers, and they're sitting there wanting to cut you up. And, uh, I mean, you know, ooh, no, 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 no. I mean, I used to get beat up for just even looking crooked, you yeah, know. I, know. I mean, I mean, let's come on. Everyone is a teenager. You know, you give your parent the stink eye, and ooh. But that's about it, and make sure you did, they didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, because if they heard you, forget it. Exactly. Uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to get beat uh and uh, uh my father if you'd ever threatened him with a knife you you know you would have woke up to a new reality yeah um because he would just have stalked somebody yes. I, I can't even imagine that yeah uh, but yeah some of these kids do it and two the parents fight with the kids yes. uh i mean i saw a, a woman holding a little two-year-old three-year-old grandson and he smacked the crap out of her it hurt me to watch it I and i was see. about to grab i thought just give me that child for 10 seconds please <laughs> and um and yeah. she's going oh you little darling you sit here and she treated it you know she rewarded him right it's like yeah well, well. to try and get him to quit acting bad but he knocked her he about knocked her teeth out yes and uh she rewarded him with a mcdonald's happy meal uh huh. And, it's and like, I thought, oh yeah, yeah he's going to be up. He's going to be. He's going to make some girl happy. Now I'm going to check back with you in ten years and let's see how this has worked out. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. I thought lose their address because. Yeah. No, no. But, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Yeah. That, that's. Ah. But anyway, we've gone from corpses to I children. I know to like childbearing so. practices. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes I, I hate to say it. Sometimes that's. Um, the end result is sometimes we produce certain members of society that end up being, uh, doing weird stuff. Like, like you said, that become yeah. the next Gacy or the next Ted Bundy, or in some cases end up being the, the, the being that's haunting a location that sometimes is a very dark haunting. And it's because yeah. this person in life was really terrible. And after in death, they are just as bad or worse. Yeah, it's uh, you can have bad behavior from living and dead. So. Yeah, right. Like it's like that that dead thing. Like it, you know how the it does it doesn't make you a better person. You know, there's you don't it's, you know that thing about growing your wings when you die. Not everybody. Oh not everybody. no, no, no. I've known several people that did not transition into nice spirits that were awful people yes. that remained awful people. After they were dead, mm-hmm. and uh, I think a lot of people think, "Oh, well, now they're at Jesus, the arms of Jesus, and they're all sweet, yes. and they're 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 you know, no, yeah. not necessarily." Yes. And yes. Uh, um, you know, and you know, it, it's um, and you have cycles where it all comes to the surface, and everyone's into it, and then they're out of it. And right now, there's a lot of shows about all that stuff, and then it'll kind of go into a, a downslope, and then it'll pick back up, you know. And then psychic stuff goes like that, you know, like during wars, you know, every mm-hmm. time there's a big war or a big trauma like what we're going through right now, yes. uh, people turn to the psychics a lot. Yeah. They turn to spirituality because, you know, they're scared of reality. And they want to see some. They want grounding in something spiritual. Yes, exactly that. And uh, 
that, and, uh, uh, but, yeah, assurance this, of what happens to us after we die. After we die. And uh, for me, I'm a total believer. Uh, I mean, there's something, there's a lot of stuff that happens that goes on. Well, yeah. But yeah. it's, um, but some of it, you know, but there's such an emphasis nowadays on people wanting the scary part of it, that they're bringing a lot of that to the surface. And there's a lot of weird things going on that you just wouldn't see 10 years ago. Well, right. You know, and there's like, um, I want to say, or, uh, you know, they, they, you know, sometimes people don't realize that you got to that death is part of life, and they they you got to let sometimes yeah. your loved ones go on. And oh yeah, you know what's that rip that like rest in peace kind of thing? You've got to, yeah. you've got to do that. Uh, and you steer the living, and you stay among the living, and um, and I'm sure you come across it maybe sometimes as a psychic. Mark, where people just, they just refuse to accept the reality of a certain person, either deep love or yeah. deep hate in some cases. They just don't want to accept that this person is not around anymore. Yeah, they won't let it go. Yeah. And the thing is, there is no life to live anymore. They have, they are a consciousness, the way I look at it. They're a consciousness. Mm -hmm. But it's not doing them any good to keep them trapped exactly to you or for that spirit not to go on sometimes they don't go on because they feel like they have they want to finish their life or they want to finish, they want someone to know what happened yeah uh and i understand that but there are some people who won't let the dick go yes yes and uh and that's a process because i know someone now who she's living in the past and it's like everything is you know that person died but they're overusing psychics right and, that's uh, point. And, and and I'm like if you use it to heal yourself and understand and deal with the fact that they're gone physically because I mean because I'm a very big believer when you die you go back you meet you go back to everybody it's like you're you're they're on vacation and when you go on vacation you don't see them again uh so they you have to let them go and do their thing and you can yeah. talk to them they can come back and forth if you want to talk that there are some people that you know the spirits are having problems they're stuck yes. or because they refuse to move on or they're too traumatized to figure it out or uh or the person that just can't deal with death. Yes. And uh, I think it's a very good thing to teach children early in life about death. Mm -hmm. That it's okay. It's just something we all do. Right. And uh, and so many people are afraid of death. But you, when you look at it, the prospect that you're going to die at some point is there. It's a hundred percent. And we. We have to figure it out and make it where we're not so disconnected from it, but also to where we're not so warped that we live in the world of the dead so much right. that we are having relationships with bodies or we're having relationships right. with with spirits that don't need to be having sex with people, or uh, which is yeah, something that happens that's sometimes. Like, and, and that's a know, whole I, different category. I want to say, you know, once upon a time, because, you know, people, you hear about these hunts, well, there was somebody that died in the house. I go, how long ago was that? Once upon a time, it was very normal for people to die at home. And even for the wakes. This was not a morbid thing. It was a normal no. thing. People used to have babies at home. And people used to die at yeah. home. And it wasn't, yeah. that doesn't necessarily cause a haunting. And my point no. also being that people of all ages in the family recognized the death. It was... It happened, and it always didn't happen, happened to grandma and grandpa. You know, you had the death sometimes of siblings, uh, friends, uh, things like that. So without, you know, because I always think, of course, age appropriate for children, but you recognized it as, you know, without sounding like, you know, the cycle of life or, you know, the whatever. Yeah. You kind of like yeah. understood it better that that was a human condition, in other words. Oh yeah, and, it, and people used to um, 
uh, in the country, at least where I knew it, uh, they would um, put the body on the table, mm-hmm. on the dinner table. The the if it was the lady, right. the lady, the female family members would come and fix her. If it was a male, yeah. the male mm-hmm. family would come and dress yeah. them, clean them. Yeah. Uh, prepare them, mm-hmm. and uh, and you know, and, and it, it it was, you know, I mean, your birth and your death are your biggest. Right. There was moment. no. There, in other words, they there, there was no embalming. There was no like, oh, we're going to take you to the no. funeral. Right. You know. In other words, the body, and of course, that's why you also would have those like burials asap. Because yes. oh yeah, you you had two days. Right. <laughs> you, exactly. You sure like. Exactly. You know. And then and yeah, and it's and if you didn't do it within those two days, then you had a problem. Yeah. And uh, and that's how a lot of people though before embalming, that's how a lot of people got buried alive. Um, right. And actually, in some countries, that's happening again because they aren't using embalming. I'd rather be dead. <laughs> if, yeah. I, if I think I'm dead, I'd rather be dead. I don't want to be yeah, hurt a lot. You know, when they, when they uh, do that, uh, you know, whether if it's not the medical examiner, but, or, but yeah, somewhere you're, it's like, you're going to be dead. You, but yeah. You're going to be dead. And then even out of something very simple like that, death and life, uh, even the Victorians came up with, they came up with ritual for all of it. And, uh, I mean, in the old days, at some point, they would actually sometimes be part of the court. And then that evolved into, around the Victorian era, instead of eating the corpse, they would put a cloth on the chest of the dead person. They would take a, make a, a shortbread cookie dough, put it on the chest on a piece of cloth, let it absorb some of the essence, cook the cookies, give those to the mourners, and that way you had a part of the person you could take with you. And so you quit eating the person. And then and then eventually it evolved from that, from the cookie thing to, you know, like in the South, everybody brings would bring food. They don't right, do it now. Right, 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 right. Exactly. But it came from the corpse quit being the food <laughs> to you were bringing food for the family to nourish the family, but you weren't having to eat the body. Right. It's like, oh, and no, honey, now I want a diet. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I'd be like, oh, no, I think I'll take that KFC chicken now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but now that people just order pizza, you know, when they yeah. go to funeral homes instead yeah. of uh, doing, you know, bringing their meals. But the meal thing kind of came off of uh, old rituals. So, I mean, we all have we all have rituals of our own that we do that we just don't realize, realize where they come from. Yeah. So when yeah. someone dies and you take food, there's a reason you take food. Right. Not just for the family. It, it comes from a ritual. I did not know that. You know. I did not know that. I always, I, I always thought, you know, that that food was okay. The family is grieving, so you're bringing yeah. food so that you know, hey, don't worry about cooking. Well, you know, that kind of. Thing. I did not yeah, know that background. And, and, and that that evolved from the, you know, because people would, um, I mean, there's old practices they used to mm-hmm. do, but now, you know. You know, in my day, you would take, you know, uh, uh, somebody always bought a ham and stuff like that. And it evolved into that's what we were doing it for. But in the old days, you had to do things to represent memorializing the person by eating something that had their essence. You know, you think about and, it, when you, especially those Victorians that would take all these pictures of the dead. A prop, you know, oh yeah, I've got several of those. Holy we have family God. members that have that. In my in my book, I just did. I put my uncle Chick's picture, and he was killed in 1950. And they took, they would call them post mortem pictures. Yeah. And he they took pictures of him in the casket, and they all had their copies of them. And that was the last I remember of any of my family doing that. But when I was a kid, I'd look at it and think he looked like Dracula, you know? Uh, <laughs> oh and I thought, why do they have that picture? And now I think it's kind of interesting because I understand. Because back in the, in the Victorian era, you didn't, photography was new. Right. And you really, it was expensive. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times the only photo or anything they had to see of that person was the picture they'd get taken 
Right. At the funeral home. And I understand that. And uh, and my parents, my mother, when they took this picture, it's 1950. Uh, they had pictures of him. But they had several pictures of family members that they did, and that was just a leftover well, of it, the Victorian era. Right, because you would, I mean, I say especially, I guess for me personally, the disturbing ones are the children. That yeah. they would like pose them like dolls, you know, like, and then, I mean, it's heartbreaking at the same time. But yeah. it's like, oh. It, it's very heartbreaking, but to us it's kind of weird. But I collect some of that now for my books because I'm like, look at this, you know. Uh, but it's foreign to us. Yes. In the modern world, a lot of it. But but I understand it because my grandparents, they cherish the pictures they had of their relatives that that was the only pictures they had. Right. And, um, and now, you know, I, it, actually people have started kind of doing it again. Really? I know of, I went to a funeral of a 30-year-old about 10 years ago, and they had pictures of the, the mother took pictures holding the dead little girl. Let me tell you and something. Had it on, oh, that, that, that's, and, oh, that's kind of be- and, and had it on top of her casket. And her the little girl was, the mother was going to remarry right before the girl died. And uh, so the, they had her little bridesmaid outfit. Oh. And uh, so what was bizarre is the future husband is the one who killed the little girl. They said accidentally, but it was, it, you know. Was this ever discovered, like, what, it, it, during that time? Well, period? he was holding her, and he said he fell with her, and it caused brain damage. But he took her to his family member who was a nurse, and they washed her, washed her clothes and everything before they took her to the hospital, and she was already brain dead. So, wow. to me, there was something odd that, in that this. Is, that is. Uh, but the mother that was going to get married to him. She went ahead and got married to him. I was you, you anticipated my next question. Is she married? Yes. Him? And so the little girl was going to be one of the little flower girls. So at the funeral, the mother took a picture of her in her wedding dress, holding the little dead girl in her bridesmaid outfit, and she got married after the funeral. There's something wrong with that. And I was looking at that picture going, girl, there's something really, <laughs> there's something really, really messed up here. And um, I thought, oh, you know, and the guy got off of the murder thing. But, uh, but there were some, you know, but when you fall with a child and you give them enough brain damage to kill them, Oh, you God. don't take them and spend hours washing them and washing yeah. their clothes and getting. You take them to the hospital. Of course. And he, um, by the time she got there, she was brain dead. So did, uh, th- th- yeah, there's something there that doesn't add up. And, and it's yeah, they're nice. really screwed up. But when I was standing there looking at the little girl and looking at her in uh, in the mother holding her and looking at her like, oh, and, you know. She had this really strange look on her face, and it, it was it was very it, it it was very typical of the old pictures they would take people holding babies. But usually, you don't dress up as your bride's dress that you use the next day after no, the funeral no, to get I, married in. You would think this this, something, this this woman would be so distraught. You would think that the she last was thing. very she was very like a tadpole. She just. <laughs> and I just didn't say like, I thought right. I would be beyond. Exactly. I think, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know what I mean? She was yeah. just like a fish. It was just like she was standing there around talking and everything, but she wasn't distraught. Uh, she apparently wasn't distraught, distraught enough to where she postponed her marriage. Right. It's, well, let's get this out of the way and just move on to the good stuff, the marriage part. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then she had two other little girls. So, I mean, you know, and this wow. one was three. So, uh, so, that's, that's uh, but it, to me, that was the last time I saw someone doing a postmortem picture. 
Well, it was, isn't it that was the, in real time? Haven't you heard of this murder that the that they just recently discovered that the kids had been missing? I want to say since September. And yeah, that's horrible. And the, they just discovered the kid's body. I want to say like within a couple of weeks ago, buried on his because he has a farm. They had he gone off to Hawaii to live now. And oh, they, I know. And, and they were like, "No, we haven't seen him since September." But but where are they? We don't know. We just and she's oh well. I mean, you know, well, she had told. I mean, and not only was the children dead, her ex husband's dead. The guy's yes. ex wife is dead. The brother who killed the ex, the the husband, because she thought she was going to get the money off of it, and he had. Which he had a million dollar policy. He switched it to someone else because he knew she was acting crazy. And well, at my alleged, my alleged thing is, you know, I mean, there's four or five dead adults. There's yeah. two dead children, and these people are partying it up in Hawaii. Yes, yes. And their children are missing, and they, I thought, you know, those people. Yeah, my, now that's where my. Guilt, innocent until guilty thing yes. kind of I get it gets part of me you know and then I'm kind of like oh you know that's these people don't need to these people are guiltier than something and uh, you know maybe they'll but if they don't get if they get prosecuted mm-hmm. she'll get off on it being a mental issue because her husband thought she had mental issues before he got murdered and She'll get. She can go to a mental institution and then get out within a few years. Um, but the husband will probably get the lion's share of the problem because it was on his farm. Mm-hmm. But if she can get off, I'd say, "Well, yeah, I'm nuts." Yeah. Um, but she was. She was. I mean, she had told the husband. You know, yeah, you can't many, stop. I'm, I'm dead. A, I, I mean, just, yeah. I, I, something happens to my kids. I'd I'd be a crazy woman. I oh, you'd be, be a crazy woman. <laughs> like like literally, and, and, and get married or much. Le- it would be like forget it. I'd be no good to anybody, much less get married no. or anybody. And if, God forbid, if he was a suspect that I thought something he had done something to my kid, it'd be like, well, I'm gonna do jail time. I'm gonna go to prison. But guess what? I want to have the satisfaction yeah. of knowing you're not breathing. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Uh, so Guaranteed. I don't know. You, you know, it's like the two psychopaths, and then you think, you know, 10 years down the line that marriage goes south. It's like, sure. You you know, you learn to, to uh, sleep with one eye open because neither one trusts the other because <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, apparently, just even looking at their story, um... We haven't mentioned their name, so I think we can say this. Yeah. Uh, but um, they've killed each other's. Uh, if if they had t- partaken in killing each other's exes, what's to stop them from killing each other? Oh, of course. It's like all butts are off the table. <laughs> it's. There, but they think that they're safe. You know. Well. Yeah, so I'm saying uh, now that because they're on their honeymoon, you know, everything is all wonderful, oh baby. Everything's all wonderful. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. I mean, oh my children are out there somewhere in the ether, just don't look yeah. in the field. Right, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then it's like, oh, they're, you know, and see, to me, then the old country person comes out and says, oh, this is one for the wood chipper. Oh. And, you know, these people, <laughs> yeah. what good can they do? What can they, I mean, what, they're not going to be the kind that, you know, go to jail and come out a new person. No. And can start a new life and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kill my children. Or, well, you know, or, I'm waiting for them you know, to, or, to get prosecuted, then they turn and they say, I, I knew about it, but it wasn't me. You know, they'll point the finger one yeah, or the other. Or, or if they had said, well, they died accidentally. Well, the thing is that the girl died at a different time than the boy. Mm-hmm. And then they're both ending in the same spot. Yeah. And uh, that, that uh, you know, you can't say, oops, they fell off a ladder. Right. You know? yeah, it's like, and yeah, I, yeah. I got scared that I did that. Mighty that looks luck. a little premeditated. 
Yes. And, and, and stuff and, like or that. Or something that like, they're hiding. Yeah. And people, th- and that's usually how psychopaths get caught because they don't realize oh. that they're so off with their lack of emotional response. It's like, why do you suspect me? Because you have total lack of emotion. Really? Oh, well, and <laughs> yeah. Well, say, and the, wi- the guy's uh, minister, the wife, yeah. thinks she's a reincarnation of God. That's great. Um, or a god. Yes. And if anyone got in her way, she'd tell them, if you get in my way, I'll kill you. And, uh, you know. I hope they, they thank that, God. That, they, they, they should, they'll see people like that should not reproduce. They should not be able to reproduce, no. But if they get in prison, you know, they allow prisoners to have families to get I married. Know, I know, that's just me being... Depending upon yeah. where they are, which I'm like, it should be prison. It should You should not be able to get yeah. married and have children and do things yeah. if you're in for life, you know. Yes. Uh, you're already in a house full of all sorts of people. So, yes. um, you know, that should be your playmate. Yes. But, um, but, yeah, this story is going to be interesting to watch because usually I'm not so, ah, guilty. But this one looks pretty bad. I know. And, and that, that, I think that has ramifications that, and like I said, once yeah. they start turning one and the other and then they start telling, you know, you know, the, they're thinking, I, I got to make a deal here with a prosecution <laughs> or something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, I think that's what, I can tell you, I think that's what's happened. That's why they knew where those children were. Probably. And it, the way they knew where to dig. I think she's, <laughs> I think, you know, they're all into, you know, oh, I love you, love you, love you. Oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they said it. I could get 20 years instead of 50, you know. Right, yeah. You're God. And, and their attorneys tell them, this is going to work if you're the first one that makes the first deal. So, yeah. something like that. And that's, that's awful. And they but... said, yeah. I and mean, they said when they came to the property, the guy jumped in a truck and ran off. Wow. And I thought, well, that, I wonder what that looks like. <laughs> right, that's so, like, um, like, let's You let's... know, but those children, I, I was very upset when I heard that story. Yeah, Because I, I thought, how horrid and awful for those those kids. And then what, you know, what... And it's like if you don't want your children, you there are places you can take your children Well, it sounds to like they had, there was family there them. that was worried about them. That's what that was worried like. about them. They could have gone, but they didn't want anyone else to have them. Yeah. And, and it's like, at least, you know, you can... Put them up for adoption. Put them in an orphanage. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. Don't. Why kill them? And uh, you know, it just uh, you know that story got me tore up. It made me furious. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, I would jump. I don't have children, but I would jump in front of a truck for kids. I would jump in front of a train over a child. Right. And here are these people who have them and just. Right, and, 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 it's, and it's like you pointed out, they end up killing children without really having to. If the, they, if the case is like, I don't want to be a parent, I'm a psychopath, and now I want to go off and live my life with my other psychopath partner, you know, whatever, in, uh, in Hawaii. In Hawaii. In Hawaii. Okay, okay. It's fine. But then don't kill your kids. I mean, you got family it's... or somebody, but uh, yeah. no, they just don't want, I know it sounds very, uh, you know, overdone, but, you know, we don't want any loose ends, like you said. I don't want, or who knows, maybe what those kids saw when they were growing up. Yeah. Maybe, you know, who knows? Yeah, it's, I'm sure we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, so, we'll get filled in once this, if it ever goes to court, you know, unless they please something with, you know, make plea Oh, deals. it'll go to court. It's just going to depend upon what they let us know. Okay. But with that one, they have to let that. that that's just a, and, and two, the dumb and dumber thing is if you do a crime, do it where you're not caught. Right. Or, and there's always, I mean, they kill these people. People kill other people and get caught. And so the person was killed for absolutely no reason. Right. Or, there was, I mean, there was, or... Yeah, it, I, that may not sound right, but I mean, you know, it, it's like, 
uh, you know, or in some cases, you know, I'm they start caught, digging. But they, I mean, they start digging and then they find more stuff than what they originally were looking for. Yeah, because I have heard of that. I have heard of. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, they discover. Wow, they you know this person that disappeared fifteen years ago, ten years. All of a sudden, it becomes like a a killing field. In other words, so yeah. yeah. When you have a farm and a couple of bodies are found, I bet you they're they're still maybe looking around. If they had any other family members, all of a sudden disappeared suddenly, or friends, yeah. or anything like that. Oh yeah, and it, and it happens every day. It yes. happens every yes day. Yes, I and uh, there was yeah. It, it, it's just uh, you know, I mean, these poor little kids killed for nothing, killed mm. for nothing, and uh, who knows what these freaks thought. And and if there's a justice, they'll get what. But the law only could do so much. So you know, they they're just the most they can do is keep them in jail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I the mother, know. if she gets to. If she gets found to be insane, she can probably get out in a few years. Yeah. And I don't think that's fair. No. And I hope that they don't do that. They they, they have to really try her as um, cognate. You know, she needs to be she needs to be sitting somewhere. She doesn't need yeah. to be outside. Premeditation. If the whole nine yards. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if all of these stories are true, she doesn't need to be going anywhere. Uh, she doesn't need to get back out because I think they have other. He had children, right? So I don't know. Um, well, I understand. There's they, there's a special treatment for prisoners that are. Oh, they that they are kill charged after children with uh, crimes against children. Yeah, the other prisoners. It's yeah. really funny. Some of them have probably done horrible things, but everybody has this uh, thing about kids. You know, like even among. Oh yeah. Even among prisoners, uh, yeah, they they have honor amongst prisoners, and if it's about children, molesters, yeah, pedophiles, mm-hmm. or killers, or killers, yeah. those people are dead. Yeah, they got some special. And it may take a while, but you know, and it, I've actually done jury duty on one where they had a guy who had killed a pedophile. They put him in another cell with another pedophile and he killed that one. There you go. And I think, I think there's a kind of a thing, you know, and the guy was already in for a while. Oh was yeah, there. he was like, okay, so what, what are you going to do? Give me a few yeah. more years? he was like, like okay, this is my job. He says, this is God, God gave me, this is yeah. my job to get rid of pedophiles. Yeah, yeah I can see that. And, and it's like, woo. Yeah. Um, so they have their own code of ethics. Yeah. And that guy, and I don't know what will happen to her in the female prison, but in the male prison, it's, 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 you, they have to keep you separate. Or they'll either kill you or they're going to make your life something else. And, um, because I know, uh, I mean, I'm always, I have another story. I have a story everywhere. Uh, but there was one in Chattanooga where a guy, this little girl, the mother got, lost her because of criminal behavior or the, mm-hmm. whatever. Later on, she came back, got the little girl. The girl didn't even know her. The little girl, the people who were trying to adopt her, the little girl didn't even know these people. And they gave it back to the mother. The mother had a criminal boyfriend. The boyfriend started torturing the little girl. And the last thing he was doing, he was making her run around a mattress. And when she would stop, He'd make her drink Tabasco sauce. Oh, please don't come. And she eventually laid down and died. Oh, and when they caught those people, put him in, he would in for life. And every, they, I mean, a lawyer I knew said every day he get, they make him drink Tabasco sauce. Yeah. I and I uh, said, well, yeah. I mean, they did more than that. But I'm they, sure. They made sure he had it. A dose. They had made sure he drank it every day. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and that that and and uh, on way it's a it's an interesting justice. Right, but it's right. it's. But what did they do? I mean, they killed someone. They ruined those people's lives. Took away their their future, and they ruined their lives. Exactly. What good did they do? What was this about? It was stupid. Right. And that's what and, I'm saying. Uh, that that. 
to me, and I know sometimes that's why I said that thing about, you know, they start digging because sometimes you don't think that these people operate in a vacuum, like what you kill two people. It's very easily that yeah. you've done away with others who've gotten in your way yeah. uh, in the past. It's not a stretch. It just so happens that this time you chose your children uh, and uh, yeah. they kind of grow overconfident because maybe in the past they've they've buried other people out there and yeah. no, nobody's ever come looking and then they're thinking, oh, oh, we'll just say we haven't seen them or whatever it is that they were saying. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, then this happens. But yeah. There's, there's the, that's uh, that's very dark spirits inhabiting these It's very bodies. scary. And there are people who get influenced by dark energy sometimes. Yes. These people yes. were just crazy uh, yes. or mean or both mm-hmm. or greedy. Uh, you know, but I mean, I have done with people who had, who were, had other personalities that were yes. not quite. I've heard of that too. Uh, and done a, it done some really bad things, but they were a well, they their you know their system was allowing it. They allowed themselves to listen to and follow whatever they were hearing. Yes, um, it just didn't happen. You know they and they're the ones who get punished for it. They have to have the responsibility for it. And um, but yeah, this and it's just a load of morons. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just a load of morons out there, just stupid people. Yes. Yes. And, but, um, but, uh, people, people, I think, you know, and, and my point is, you know, they've made all these movies about serial killers and psychopaths and, but people don't realize that the absence of a consciousness or remorse or empathy, that is a psychopath, you know, that's that, a psychopath. And people think it's like. You know, um, you know when they had that Dexter series out, he was supposedly a psychopath, but he would only kill other killers. So it was kind of like they gave him an excuse. He was yeah. very dark, but yeah. almost like a, a, a. But he was only killing other psychopaths. Other like, killers. That's a hundred yeah. version. When you're a psychopath, you don't make that distinction. You're not gonna no. be like I'm gonna service society. No. You don't care about that. No. Yeah. And until you really get to look in the eyes of a psychopath, you really don't know what dead means. Yeah. They yeah. are, they only see other people as things. Yes. They aren't looking at you like you have feelings or you have thoughts or you want to, you want to live. You know, they, they're looking at you for whatever thing it needs to feed in them, which is either entertainment, sexual, spiritual, whatever it is control, for them. Just to be able to control. Because yes, that's really what motivates them is control. control. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about making that person a blank slate for them to create their fantasy on. And uh, it doesn't matter what they do to you, how they do to you, or what you beg for. And... Um, and it, it, it's, but like I said, if you get to look in their faces and their eyes, you know you're 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 a dead duck. Well, uh, and you know, you know, some people point out, well, but some of the, like that BTK killer, they're married, they have children, and, and people don't understand. Sometimes they acquire because they use the, let's say, the family per- persona. Like in other words, I'll get married, I'll have the kids. Yeah. Not because I really well, love they them, use but that because a, I need yeah. it to to look normal. Well, they use it as what they used to call a beard. Right. Yeah. Uh, they go, oh, well, he could have done that. He's well, Ted Bundy. They mm-hmm. almost had him at one point and said, well, he's he's too clean cut for this. He he couldn't possibly have done this. And they quit looking at him, even though girls were calling and said, we think it's him. Yes. And they go, well, no, he doesn't fit the description. Right. And mm-hmm. because he was dating people, he had people who had dates. Uh, I knew a friend in Ch- uh, who, a uh, Cindy Brundage, a friend of mine. She knew a girl in Salt Lake that after church he went to church with them, and he would walk them home because of the uh, strangler that was out. I he was the strangler. <laughs> who was he it? was um, the strangler they were supposed to be protected from. He, he, he was walking them home. 
who's this author? Ann Rule. I think she worked with him. This was really a long time. At the very beginning yeah. of Washington State. Oh, yeah. State. That's a messed up thing. Messed up thing, yeah. And she says it, you know, you would never, ever think that this guy was capable of doing what he was doing because he looks so yeah. wholesome, so clean cut, so like, like how could you be a monster and actually behave so normally? Yeah. Well, that's how they meld in. Well, They monster. have to have a beard or a sham mm -hmm. to make it look like they, they're fitting in. They they would never do that. Exactly. It's like, and then, this, this is and then he got away for years. Yeah. I, years like that. Yeah. The, the, and that uh, girls, I mean, there was one of the girls that wrote about him, you know, that thought he was guilty, thought it was him, and she still was dating him and pursuing him. That's scary. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, you know, uh... What? You know, you think he's a serial killer and you're dating him? No, I mean, tell you something. And sometimes you always think, is, is there no self-preservation in your personality? Because if I ever got a whiff of something, I'd be like, yeah. Oh, like, that's I'd it. be I'm, like. You know, uh, I've never got to uh, answer a phone call from this person ever again, much less go out with him. Forget it. No. Well, I mean, a long, 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 long time ago, I dated somebody who, they were nice. They had a beautiful house. They, I never got to go in their house. Uh, and but at some point, they told me, you know, they had um, some pets that had died. And they put them in the refrigerator, and the refrigerator died. And they just got another refrigerator and had the refrigerator sitting in our kitchen. And I went, oh God, I'm going to end up in Tupperware. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I got away from that. I got away from that person so fast. Yeah, you know, then I, it's for, it took me a while to get my uh, to go. Ah. <laughs> you know, to me, I'd be like, um, uh, because you like, don't. Like, please know. don't share he, anything he with was, me that you know, you're going to be sorry later on that I know. Uh, forget it. Let's just, <laughs> yeah. It's like there's, you know, and this person, you'd never know. They were always clean cut looking. Everything was nice. They were very hardworking and everything. But here they had dead pets and dead refrigerators in their kitchen. No. No, and no, I was no, like, no. Uh, have you ever thought of throwing the refrigerator away and burying your pets? No. That's, yeah, that's, see, that's uh, the kind of stuff. And, that, like, that's oh. like, and, uh, and they had a roommate, and the roommate was part of this. And I thought, oh. So you never know. And uh, you have to have self-preservation. And these women and men that don't. They're just wanting to die anyway. They want to commit suicide yeah. and just can't do it. People, They're just waiting I, I, for somebody else to do it. You know what? I'm glad you pointed that out, Mark, because people don't realize when what a death wish is. You no, know? and they're, they're, and they, is they're waiting for someone else to fulfill that. Yes, you know, they're yes. too chicken yeah. to kill themselves. So let me go with this person. Yeah, everybody thinks and that I've death had... wish is that 1970s movie, and it's no. Death wish is, is something like what you described where people... Uh, put themselves intentionally in such risky situations and terrible positions, and, over and over uh, again. yeah, over and over again. And it's uh, they have there. It's a thrill for them, I think. Uh, or they're so broken somewhere. Yeah. They're just I don't know what that is, but they're like people marrying guys who are murderers in prison that they've never seen. Yeah, I've you know, that. wanting that people wanting to marry Charlie Manson. You know, come what on, is that? What is that? Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. That's a, one that I think they need to study, too. Because right. what is that? Why Why would you want to go and be with someone who is responsible for heinous, brutal murders and is thinks that they're a god and thinks they're crazy and they're, we're going to kill my, who knows how many people they killed. And you want to marry them. What is that, you know? And, and this is something I've heard. It's not only like Manson. I've heard that several serial killers and things. Several like, times. They get a yeah. bunch of um, groupies, for lack of a better word, or marriage proposals. Oh. And it's like, what is wrong with you? And, I don't know. And see, people like Tech Watson, he got married and has four or five kids. Isn't that sweet? And in prison. Yeah. And some girl had to go out of their way to do that. And um, and to have children by a psychopath. Exactly, exactly. That, that you know, you're, like, a, you, 
Ooh. Was it Manson's grandson? Is it his grandson? I don't know if there, if he there's somebody that changed their surname, but I, and I know Manson's grandson. Yeah, he he's uh he's around. Oh yeah, that showed. I mean, they, he had several. He had several children because mm-hmm. they were the free love and yeah. free, you know, penicillin, you know, kind of thing. And uh, they um, they have several. There's, I mean, when he died, there were several of them showed up to try and get the body. That's... And because they wanted to, you know, because they get the body and the his uh, the car, his basically his copyright to his image, they make money. So all these people show up. And uh, I would not be one that would be showing up. I'd be going, oh, you know, no, 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 no. my name is Charlie Schneck. (laughs) Right, talk about bad juju. I would never, (laughs) no, no. It would be like Hitler or Charlie Manson. No, 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 no. I don't want to say that I'm related to any of those people. Uh, you know, but, uh, and there's, there's a grandson out there that's very, you know, there's been children that he had, you know, that are, that do, are ashamed of it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. but then there's people who've tried to profit from it. And somebody got his body. I don't know. I mean, they were having a fight over it. So, I mean, you know, I was like, let them, oh, I'm yeah. in a potter's field somewhere. Ooh. That's right. Good riddance. Well, but, uh, but there are people who get into it. So, no, no, no. Yeah. There's people that at the end of the day, it all boils down to money. And you <laughs> kind of think, you, they, yeah, you just convinced me you are related to this person. Yeah. Because it'd be like, not only am I changing my surname, I will not in any way, shape, or form connect myself or my descendants to this person yeah. ever. For yeah. I, I don't care about the money. But yeah, no. but yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, there, there's a, yeah, that's the thing you can't get rid of, you know. <laughs> well, anyway, Mark, let me ask you for my podcast listeners because I'm going to put a link in the credit to the sure. show if somebody wants to reach out to you, especially for all these things that you got okay. going on. How do they find you? All right. Now, my, uh, of course, my name is Mark Fultz, F U L T S. If you look on YouTube, you can look up Mark Fultz, and uh, there'll be a little symbol with my pink symbol with my initials in it. You can click on that. You can see all of my videos I'm doing. Next week, I'll have the channeling of the Bell Witch okay. on there, which, believe me, it's freaky. Wow. Uh, it's very freaky. Uh, there, and uh, Also, if you want to look up Videos I've done, I've done The Haunting of Camelot Junction. Okay. You can look up The Fat Psychic. Um, very soon in the next month or so, I'll have The Fat Psychic Cooking Show. Okay. Uh, if you want to look me up on Facebook, it's just look up Mark Fultz or look up Chattanooga Chills. Okay. C-H-I-L-L-S. Uh, anyone that comes to Pensacola, if they want to, they can reach me through the Live and Let Live pen, uh, Metaphysical Store on SoFly Field Road. Uh, so they can catch me either way. They can find me on YouTube. They On Amazon, they can look up, put in my name, and it will bring up all my books. Um, or you can reach me on Facebook or, you know, and, and full at AOL.com. So it's my last name, F-U-L-T-S, C-H-A-T, like chat, you know, chit-chat. Uh, so folks, chat at AOL.com. And I don't check my email as much because I'm old. So uh, I've been hit, hit a few times. So um, And so I've had a lot of head trauma. So just bear with me. But if you look me up on YouTube or you look me up on Amazon or you look me up on Facebook, you'll find a way to find me. I'm sure. It's, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, so right now I do, I'm a, of course, I'm a working psychic. I do readings and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But mostly what I'm focusing on now, right now is books, videos, 
um, and stuff like that. And then, you know, uh, just being, and doing art. So I'm an artist as well. So, oh, wow. uh, so, and an author. So it gets weird. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've made it to where I have no problem to entertain myself. Absolutely so, not. I want to wish you the best of luck on everything because I'm telling you, you must be one busy person. But like we said, when you're the creative type, this is what really what makes uh, creative people happy. Okay. Well, I've had fun talking to you. We talked everything uh, I know uh, before they came on. We were talking about toilet paper, shortages, <laughs> and everything else. And we right. talked anything from <laughs> toilet paper to to necrophilia to <laughs> to uh, um, serial killers to funeral homes and right. and right. Uh, right. postmortem pictures. So I think we covered a few things. Yeah, we covered it. We covered it. <laughs> Okay. The cabinet totally. is not. They believe me. That's not the only thing we can talk about. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's too much more. So, but it was been it's been very fun. So, thank yeah, you for having me on your show. On the contrary, it's been my pleasure. And again, I'll be checking back with you because I'm telling you, especially that that psychic. Uh, yeah, the bad psychic thing, thing, thing is going to be a road trip. It's going to be a road trip. <laughs> Okay, darling, take care. Well, thank you. You have a good one. And bye bye. Goodbye, y'all. Bye bye. Wow. He's such a blast to talk to. What a great guy. And my dogs are having a little meltdown. Be quiet. Uh, yeah. But anyway, guys, I love Mark because. It's really funny because before we started rolling, we were talking about all these recent things that have gone on because of the COVID-19. And we got stuck about, you know, about everything, about how everybody got fixated on the toilet paper thing. <laughs> and we just didn't get it. He didn't get it and I didn't get it. And I was telling him, man, some of the funniest memes I've seen have to go around the toilet paper thing. You know, like if, if it's so like this, I'd be like, well, maybe extra food or I don't know but that whole toilet paper thing escaped me totally and him obviously but yeah we were having a good old laugh about that and um, I want to say one of the things that that's what I, I, I gotta bring him back I gotta bring him back because especially once he gets all these projects like that that, that he's got the videos and you know all these books and everything um, I can't wait I can't wait to see them I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to the cooking ghost story thing. Because to me, it's like, what? I can't believe nobody really has ever thought of this. But to me personally, I think it's a fabulous idea. Because it's like, let's learn how to cook these funky dishes. And in the meantime, I'm going to be talking about some weird ghost story stuff and we're going to mix it around into the recipes or the, I think that's fantastic. Let me tell you, so this is, you know, what, when they would have those, um, what you call it? The creature feature. Oh my God. My dogs are having, I have somebody staying upstairs in my house. It's my grandson. And you would think is he spending the summer here with me that by now they would be used to him. And he makes a noise because it, I, I live in an old wooden house. And anybody that's lived in old wooden houses know that if you're going upstairs, and he's a big guy, he's a real big guy. You know, if, you know, you there, there's always something that squeaks, a wood, something. So my dogs, every time, it's like, oh, I'm ready to kill them. It's like, by, haven't you gotten used to it? But obviously they're not because you hear them. So yeah, the extra noise, it's my dogs overreacting. Like, you know, like, you know, those car alarms that you hear that always constantly go off, drive everybody crazy. That's what my dogs have become lately. It's like, I'm ready to kill them. But anyway, getting back to Mark, I, I can't wait to see him in that, uh, that project of all the ones that he talked about. Uh, because to me, it's like, that, that's, that's, that's what a great idea. And, and like I was saying, creature feature, you know, where you would have these movies, sometimes real campy horror movies, but the host, like Elvira, or they have, would have other stuff, was really would just make the whole thing, you know, the, the whole, you know, package 
and they became memorable. But um, yeah, that's uh, he's he's a super super interesting guy, and of course he uh, he's going to also do the virtual tours. I know for many years he did actual walking tours. I believe when he lived in Chattanooga, so he's got a lot of stories. Um, either stuff that personally he's witnessed or that he's heard about throughout the years. And that, that thing also, the fat psychic, that's another one. <laughs> ah, that's great. That we, were, we were talking, yeah, that's what happens also when you stay at home and you can't leave and you've got food. and But going out, you're not really allowed to go out that much. So guess what? You put on some extra weight and yep. Yeah. That's what happens. We were, that, that's what we were talking about when you're younger. But it's like I tell them, yeah, Mark. But lately, it's like also you're stuck at home, and what else is there to do except snack on stuff? But any minute now, I want to put this on mute. Well, because I have the one dog. You know, like when you have that one child, that that you're like, I have that one dog. I, guess I have several dogs, okay, but I have my one. Uh, repetitive doesn't pay attention and that one her name is onyx and onyx come here and um she's she's i'm telling you you gotta love her because otherwise i kill her come here come here who's the one barking no then they'll all come up here i don't know if you, some of you the the ones that will see the video eventually you see her she'll jump into the seat behind me so <laughs> I'm telling you again guys I want to thank you for being part of my audience if you hear my voice is a little bit funny this is again the aftermath of an allergy attack um, that's what happens when you're the summer summers in South Florida but anyway uh, thank you again for being part of my audience I have a lot of fantastic guests lined up um, thankfully because of everything you know the video video um, video interviews have worked out believe it or not unfortunately i have had a couple of my guests call out because they've had um some family members or friends that have you know been affected by the COVID 19 and but otherwise you know um and have even had people that were going to tour for, you know like actually and since their tour schedule uh their appearances got forget it got, got sidelined then they started uh, deciding to tour virtually. So I got a lot of interesting guests and shows coming up from people that their tours just got deep sixed and they're like, okay, we gotta do something with this. So they decided to go uh, on shows like mine. So again, um, and also I've got a bunch of books as you can tell by my slides. You can look me up on Amazon as Marlene Pardo Pellicer or go to MarlenePardo.com. Um, you know, I've got three nonfiction books and I'm working right now on my fourth book. And there, it's a supernatural thriller, kind of paranormal, occult thingamajigger going on, fantasy. I don't know what else to call it. It falls into so many genres. Um, I'm working on my fourth one. Uh, I think I'm going to be releasing that in probably August of this year. And then I'm gonna be gonna try to squeeze the last one in for the end of this year. And I put out um, another one uh, that's for young adults. It's I wrote three stories, and I have it for free. So you go to Smashwords. You can get it on any type of device, like either either Mobi or PDF. You can read it for free. It's about 50 pages, but it's pretty good. Horror light sublime evil uh and if you want to look it up again it's uh, i've come for my girl and two other dark tales that's the title of it and uh again if you, if you like it if you want to go back and give me feedback on amazon that's fine again and uh you know whichever it, it also if you know if you have this is apart from that and this is reaching out to my true believers if you've got some uh stories first hand, second hand uh, that you want to share with me, go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com There's a tab there for Submit Your Story 
And uh, if you don't want to tell me the entire story up front, tell me a little bit, and I'll get, you know, if you want. I can interview you, you can write it out, uh, I, however you're willing to submit it, I'm willing to accept it. If you need anonymity, I'm very good on anonymity. Whether it's you, you as the person relating it, or even people that are part of the story, I can do that. I'm very good at that. I don't have a problem with it. So don't forget, I call that my true believer stories. Um, and again, you're all wonderful, and uh, I look forward to spending some time with you next week. Take care.